hello, folks. <laughs> and don't, that doesn't mean that there's been a decision made. <laughs> I'm just doing it uh, that way to start it. Welcome to Nate Land Podcast. Uh, as always, I'm with Aaron Weber, Nate, uh, Brian Bates, <laughs> Nate Bargatze. <laughs> Uh, if you're carrying a credit balance month after month, it can feel like you're in a never-ending cycle of debt. Upstart can help you make that final payment so you can get ahead. Find out how Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash Nate. That's upstart.com slash Nate. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know we sent you. Also, uh, Keeps. Keeps offers a simple, stress-free way to keep your hair with treatments starting at just $10 per month. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Nate to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Nate to get your first month free. Keeps dot com slash Nate. Also, thank you to our good friends at Viore for sponsoring this episode of uh, Nate Land. I uh, love Viore. I got some. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at viore.com slash Nate. Not only will you real, not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but you will enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75. That's viore.com slash Nate. Welcome, everybody, uh, to the podcast. Uh I did hello folks. There's been a lot of people still, mm-hmm. you know. When's the re- revote? I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna let any no one's gonna know. It's gonna be when I decide. <laughs> uh it's gonna come out of nowhere. Yeah. And it's just gonna pop up and be like, this is it. Yeah. And I'll I'll, I'll announce it. I don't know when it's gonna be. I'm telling you, I like I you know, we talked about it. I I lean to uh I like the idea of hello folks and the response being that let's go folks. The, when, you know, the when the person mentioned that uh with our buddy Greg Garcia, uh who's just starting a new show. Uh he he said he likes that too. Like the response. He that was his, he thought he thought that well when he re- heard the comment, he's like, Oh, that's what I think too. Okay. The response to it in the wild. Yeah. When we're out in the wild, it's hello, folks. Let's go, folks. Okay. Huh? I like no? it. A call and response. A call and response. But maybe it's just going to be let's go, folks. Maybe <laughs> it will be you decide what you – it's pick your own adventure. <laughs> you do what you want to do. Okay. What if it's hello, folks? I think I've accepted that we'll never pick one, and this will just be – it'll be a constant debate. I, it'd probably always be hello, folks. I mean, that's <laughs> – Yeah. There's not enough <laughs> – I think we may have to go underground. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My let's go, folks, movement seems small. But I will say I get tagged in so many things of people saying let's go now. Yes. You're getting those just yeah. – I didn't realize how much of an epidemic this was. Oh, it's bad. And now it's just uh, – it's all I hear. Tom Brady the other day did mm-hmm. some video him. Yesterday. Yeah. Throwing yeah. football, and he said let's go. Yeah. I'm well, like that, but th- I – if you can throw a video – if you can throw football like he did into that – you're saying I, he deserves it? He, yeah, to me, like the let's go with him is like an athlete is like, let's go. Like yeah. it's, you're kind of, you're on the field. Like the you're, greatest of all time. He yeah. can say it. Yeah. Yeah, people are saying it, you know, uh, you get a shopping cart that's not, I got a squeaky wheel and you go, let's go. <laughs> and then you're finally, I got to get around this grocery store and not be a nightmare. And that's when people are saying, let's go. And that's the guy that should be stopped. Uh, okay. You got to go, okay, you can't do that. <laughs> It's yeah. the like you know if, if it stays in the athletic world, it's it that's where it belongs. Uh-huh. Yeah, you can't be you know working at McDonald's and you know fries <laughs> get done quicker than you thought. And you go, let's go. All right, you get to go. Your boss manager goes, hey, you get to close that ice cream machine a little bit earlier tonight. Let's go. <laughs> Which maybe that would be a big deal. Yeah, I mean, yeah. They don't have to clean it. It's four o'clock in the afternoon. Hey, go ahead and clean the uh, ice cream machine. Let's go. (laughs) And then they go clean the ice cream machine. So maybe that's where the problem is with these sayings is is that the let's go. Tom Brady, that video, I guess it's real, right? I I guess. People are saying, I mean, it doesn't seem like I think they could do that. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. It's pretty, if anybody hasn't seen it, uh he's just in those the if anybody those football they have those two wheels that spin and yeah. shoot a football out and the guys catch it so he throws it into it and then it spits back to him and he catches it and then throws it back in it 
It's pretty crazy. Three it's times. Three times. Yeah. The the but I could see it when he went back. But I mean, you know, those guys are yeah. I mean, that's how good they are. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. so. Uh, but I mean, would it just? You know, if you barely miss, I feel like it's going to knock it out. Mm-hmm. Probably wasn't the first take. Let's be yeah, I, yeah. Probably I did mean, that for hours. Even <laughs> if he did it for hours, I mean, it'd be very funny to go try it and then be like, "Oh, it's actually unbelievably easy." <laughs> like if the wheel, he just spins it the wheel, sucks it in. It's, well, it if in. he spins the wheels the other way, uh-huh. and you're like, "Well, you can't not not make it." Like <laughs> yeah. it's the hard thing is to make it not stick in. There. <laughs> that would you find that out? Yeah, that would be if I was. Uh, if you wanted to get under Tom Brady's skin, they should like another quarterback should be like and just like have his baby throw it in there and go. Just because you haven't seen this, no one's seen that. No one knows how real like, you know, if someone makes some crazy video, sometimes you could be like, yeah, just no one knows what that is, and it's a very simple thing. I don't, uh-huh. I have no example though. Well, I had never seen anybody try to do that, so you're right. You're it's right. Like, who knows how hard that? I, is. I'm hoping that it is hard. I, it looks hard. Yeah. So it looks impressive. I'm not saying I'm not impressed by yeah. it, but it would be funny if you're like, dude, everybody. Yeah. Didn't he post a video recently of like nailing three long putts in a row? Um, uh, no, I haven't seen that, but that doesn't surprise I me. And I, I mean, I was really impressed with that. Yeah. Uh, well, the, no, Phil Mickelson made yeah. a bunch of putts, which was 10 foot putts. It was like everyone he made uh for 10 footers it w- was like uh, you know whatever money on that match the tournament that they right. played in whatever money would go to uh that uh to a charity mm-hmm. and phil they just kept setting the ball down and phil just kept hitting and makes uh i think every one yeah. except the last one so maybe made 20 or 15 in a <laughs> row 10 foot putts that's crazy yeah it's insane and just to be like going just that repetitive where you don't none of them slide off and the last one, like, but it was like kind of the last time. I mean, it's pretty wild. What would that be comparable to in basketball? Like a 30 foot? I mean, probably shot. just, uh, I mean, you know, I was gonna say like free throws if you made 10 in a row, but I mean, they could make, oh, uh, yeah, Steph Curry could hit threes forever and mm-hmm. not miss one. Uh, I don't know, forever, but you know what I mean? He but, could, like, yeah, <laughs> I think he could 10 make a in a row more. threes, I guess. <clears throat> I mean. Ten feet is not long, but it's. I mean, putting's hard. Yeah. <laughs> but if it's a straight putt, yeah. that guy should be. Phil should be able to make. If you're at that level, you should be able to make these. That's what it should be. How many in a row did he hit? I don't. I mean, fifteen, twenty, yeah. something like that. Uh, you should be again. Maybe you go try it, and you're like, oh, it's actually yeah. If you find the right putt, <laughs> that's when you go to like Dick Sporting Goods. You go to Sporting Goods store and you let them. You can practice putt. Yeah, I swear our golf galaxy. Their holes on the practice putting green, I think they lean in <laughs> because you'd be trying to putter out and you're like, you just drain <laughs> yeah, like I, four 40 footers and you're like, this might be, I might have to go buy like this the, putter. The male version of skinny mirrors. I was yeah. about to say, yeah, the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did we talk about that on the podcast? Is that where I learned about that? Skinny, skinny mirrors? mirrors? Yeah, the mirror. Make Seinfeld. It look, oh, TV I, I don't show. remember. Yeah, I know the show. Yeah. Is there an episode about that? Yeah. Okay. Elaine tries on a dress. Mm, okay. <clears throat> in a skinny mirror. In a skinny mirror. But I think for women, that is, with shopping, uh, I think that is something that department stores do. What were you talking about? I was talking about, yeah, you go to the dressing room, you think you look great, and then you go home and you look like garbage. How do they make a skinny mirror? I don't know if they do that. Yeah, like a fun house mirror. You've been in a fun house. Well, I mean, that would be, <laughs> wouldn't that be pretty obvious? Like that you're going... Uh, <laughs> You just zipped up, my head just a bloop. <laughs> you go, you got my weight. Is I need to put on some weight? Yeah. And then you're delusional that you go, I'm going to go eat. I look malnourished. <laughs> yeah. My head is huge. My head, <laughs> by the way, gigantic. Yeah. I think you just dial that back a little bit. Whatever yeah. that is, you just dial it back just enough. Uh, I, I, I mean, I have a hard time thinking that they could have the lighting and stuff. I think make you look really good. I don't know if there's skinny mirrors. I think there are. You just know it. Your only experience she, is from this shit. There's skinny a, mirrors. Oh yeah. Oh really? It leans different. Oh. Oh. It's at a little and bit then, of an angle. Yeah, and so then you're like, oh, I look. Yeah. Well. So the bigger the angle, 
That's how big you are. <laughs> a big girl walks in. They go, give us two seconds. You hear, <laughs> rawr, rawr, rawr. They're, they're, they're like a, a construction guy goes in. He's like, learn, like a dolly. Hold on real fast. Ma'am, two seconds. All right. We'll be, beep, and she walks in. Beep, beep. <laughs> Come on back. But <laughs> just banging like hammering. And then she goes in. God, I look unbelievable. That mirror is, there's a team back there with ropes. Hold it. Hold it. <laughs> Guy's sweating. Easy, fella. Easy. <laughs> That's uh, <laughs> just like like Mission Impossible when he goes and can't touch the. They're behind. They're holding that like just sweat like, and he's just letting it go. It goes. She's almost got. And then she goes. I'll take it. And then she walks out. Boom! Everything falls. What was that? Nothing. Nothing. We're, let's 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 ring you up real fast. <laughs> Hold it. <laughs> All right, psychology episode. Oh, this is, these are the comments from the. Didn't someone tell me not to do that? And then, you then said someone, someone said, yes. said that, but I don't think it was us. I think it's good to yeah do it. Uh, yeah, I feel like someone said don't do it, and then someone then people are like, no, you should. Mm-hmm. We're juggling three different episodes this time. So yeah, I we got a lot important. of comments. Uh, it's been a while. I haven't feel been, like I haven't seen you guys in a long time. I know it's been a couple. Uh, Three weeks, I think. Three weeks. Yeah, three weeks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're talking about all the stuff we did. Uh, but let's first talk about you guys. Uh, Meg, psychology episode Meg. My husband was not a fan of the pod, but I dragged him down to Nashville anyway, and he laughed so hard the whole time. It was awesome that Nate's wife greeted us at the door, and the guys met with the crowd afterwards. Thank you for the much-needed comedy therapy. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh yeah we we did uh meet and greets and I think with the, I mean I think everybody stayed which was cool felt yeah. like it yeah, Laura's really gifts cool. were a big hit my wife passed out gifts when they came in I don't think people knew we were doing the year anniversary show <laughs> so they were like oh but we uh yeah passing out those gifts I know we mentioned it twice I think in the episode because it was we did, we talked about it to two different audiences yeah and then we uh, put together those shows but it was uh yeah it was a big hit it was a good time. Abby Tilford, it was so painful to hear y'all talk about Pavlov's dog and never mention the cold open from the office where Jim basically does this experiment on Dwight with his computer noise and Altoids. Yeah, I do remember that episode. Mm-hmm. How did we forget that? Why didn't we I was thinking that? of it. I don't know. Oh, that counts. Sorry, Abby. Uh, Aaron was thinking of it. What's well, even worse? Yeah. Should have mentioned it. He was, uh, Abby should have known that uh, <laughs> one of us was probably thinking it in our heads. Uh, <laughs> Bryce LK, I was hoping little Albert would come up. I've taken a few psychology classes, and that's always stood out because I'm pretty sure that's how you create supervillains. If I remember correctly, it was a nurse's baby that she had to bring to work, and the psychologist would experiment with him either under the guise of helping to watch him or just sneaking in the experiments when mom wasn't around. Worst babysitter of all time. Yeah, Yeah, it's terrible. It's like my babysitter when I was a, a kid. She would smoke <laughs> cigarettes in the. Really? Oh yeah. Would I'm, you go out there with like her? Five. I take a hit. <laughs> she go. She'd light mine. She'd give me mine. She'd light hers <laughs> off. Her next one on, and just give me her half smoked one because I was a baby. I can't smoke yeah, the whole yeah. thing. And uh, we'd sit out there and watch the construction workers go by. Uh, <laughs> Boys work on the stoop. Uh, she, but that was like, you know, so when I was, I mean, I think I was one or two. Yeah. I was in, uh, my parents had to work. They just had no money. So they just found somebody. They just found somebody. This lady, I think, just kept a bunch of kids and is like, you know, would be like, can we give one more? And she's like, yeah, sure, <laughs> absolutely. And throw them in. And I just got thrown in the mix and she would just smoke in the house. I mean, can you imagine? Can you imagine? In the house? Oh, yeah. It was her house, right? It was her house. Still. It's and I feel like that baby. was probably more acceptable. Oh, yeah. yeah. And like 80, 81. I mean, it wasn't even. You wouldn't have even. You would have maybe not wanted me to be, be a baby to be around the smoke mm-hmm. just because you don't want to. Because you smell like a cigarette the whole time. <laughs> but I don't think you're thinking of. You're not thinking the about lungs, the actual health. Like the health yeah. of it. Like, yeah. I don't yeah. think any yeah. of that was on the table then. 
Uh, I mean, I think my mom said she walked in one time and was like, all right, where's uh, Nathan? Uh, <laughs> and then the lady was like, I don't, you know? <laughs> like, and had to, like, it had to find me. Yeah. I was like under the couch like a cat. <laughs> Playing with the ashtray. <laughs> I mean, that was, you know. I've been, I talked about cigarettes a little bit. I like, um, you know, I mean, you shouldn't smoke. If you don't smoke, don't smoke. But when you see an old timer still smoking, I'm kind of like, all right, good for him. Some guy in his 90s or something. Yeah, just hanging on. You're like, you just don't see it too much. And you're like, yeah, man. It's like a veteran's hat on. Yeah, you're like, yeah. that guy's earned that it. Guy's, you know? Yeah, he got grandfathered in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can't be new and smoke. That's crazy. All right. Yeah. But if you're, if you're old, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got the good cigarettes. Uh, this is the opposite of good advice. But no one's here. Uh, this is where the people are going to tell their kids, they're like, yeah, just do everything they say that's cool. Yeah. Opposite of that, right. you'll be in pristine shape. You will be the healthiest human being alive. Yeah. Connor Smith, the test about delayed gratification has recently been disproven in multiple other studies. The quality of home life and the financial stability of the kids' families were overwhelmingly the determining factor in the success of the children tested. It's amazing you have to do a test to determine a good home life yeah. might lead to more success. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah. I don't remember. It. That was the cookie. Uh, the marshmallow, oh. and then if you wait. 15 minutes. And they say the kids that waited had higher ACT scores yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's just such a long, like you do that test and you're like, all right, let's see what happens in 18 years. Mm -hmm. Like it's that long of a, you know, mm -hmm. and then you're like, did they do better? And you're like, they did. <laughs> all right. You know, I don't know. And then had to do another 18 years to disprove yeah. that study. He goes, eight, after 18 years, he goes, I don't, that doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. And the guy's like, this is all I've been working on for 18 years. <laughs> well, he did 15 minutes with one cookie and two cookies and then he puts it away. 18 years later, he comes back. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's see how we did. And the ones that took this stuff slap him. And he goes, it's a, that's what I would think out of you. Next. That's how he goes. Uh, yeah. He marks it down. Figures. He took the, I don't know if you remember, but he took the marshmallow a little earlier than everybody else. And that shows. And he's next. And they come in polite. And he goes, oh, you were one of the. You waited. The, you waited. Hmm. This guy's been busy. The scientist's been busy twice, psychologist. <laughs> he had two big days. He's late for both days. You're like, you only have to work two times in 18 years. And you and he goes, I know, but it's if he must be late, it'll be me, because I just forget, yeah. you know, that I have to be in that day. His wife's furious at him. Yeah. Still not going. No, no. 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 I my picked. What if that is you they go, all right, you gotta spend your time on a on a if you were a psychologist. And now you got to pick one thing to do. And this guy was so smart, he picked this. Mm -hmm. So he's like, I don't, I mean, just the sweetest gig. <laughs> so I have one hectic day when they're like five. And then 13 years later, I just see how they do. Hectic yeah. day, but really you're just handing out cookies. <laughs> to five-year-olds. And see if they take it or not. That's but if like, your days are. I'm a little swamped today. If your other days are zero. Yeah, then that feels Anything's like a hectic. That's yeah, the that's Super that, Bowl. That's the Super Bowl. And then you go, all right, you mark on a calendar, 13 years, 9 a.m. You, you have a calendar with 13, 13 years ahead. Yeah. Well, yeah, a lot I of mean, pages. He has to. Licks his... Yeah, he has to. Uh Eric Kindred, the Stanford prison experiment was a joke of a psychology experiment, actually. The doctors skewed the results by doing things to make them act the way they did. I wonder how most of us still remember it as a legit experiment when it's been long since proven not to be. Well, I guess I'm not helping that cause. Who decides if it's a legit experiment? Eric Kindred? I guess it came out later. Well, that the, the whole idea of it doesn't sound like it's a good idea. Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, so it that's sounds like probably, a nightmare. Yeah. That's so, what he's talking about? Yeah, just the idea of the that they shouldn't be doing it. But I think some of the students maybe later admitted that they faked some of their – just because they knew that's what the teacher wanted. Yeah. Stuff like uh -huh. that. And you're having to act like a prisoner. <laughs> and so you're like, well, how can we get this moving along? Yeah, exactly. 
And so you you ramp it up a notch. <laughs> what you would have to do, because the other that actually makes a ton of sense yeah. if the, the experiment is actually nothing. Because that means Stanford students are so stupid that they can't, that this guy goes, he gets into Stanford, and then you go, now you're a prisoner. And he goes, I don't know how to act anymore. <laughs> and then he just becomes a lunatic. Yeah. Like you, I mean, you would need to really like lock them up for a month or something. Yeah. And I mean, they really, they can't like, they can't leave. They didn't do that. Right. They let them leave or something or. Um, no, I think it was supposed to be a two weeks where they supposed to stay. <laughs> I mean, over a couple hours. It's like when <laughs> Dwight pees in the corner of the elevator. Yeah, immediately. But immediately. <laughs> He just yeah. thinks one kid. <laughs> He's got to like, establish a pea corner. Yeah. That makes yeah. a ton of sense now. You ever see that show 60 Days In? You ever see that? Oh, Where man. they send regular people into prison and just f- see if they can last 60 days. And there's this guy who was like school teacher and he was talking so much smack ahead. Of, He's like, this will be no problem. This will be like a vacation. I get to just read books. Yeah. He immediately got put in solitary confinement within like two days for causing trouble. And he just had to stay in solitary confinement. It was hilarious. He turned. So now we have a TV show about the Stanford prison experiment. <laughs> Essentially, I mean that's that's but, all. But in a real prison. But, but even in a that, real prison, even, even a, that I question. Did I not do that for television? What's he you, doing after two days? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how much is fake and how much is real. Yeah. Can you it's, just it's do anything tell. on TV now? I guess, like, so. I guess <laughs> now you can just be like, "Hey, what if we shot a guy?" <laughs> yeah. What if we hunt a human on TV? And and I mean, some networks like, all right. I mean, if it's you know, pay per view, I think we could do it. Mm-hmm. Just sign a waiver. <laughs> I mean, we'll just sending people to prison. Yeah, as just a fun, so people can sit and eat popcorn and watch at night. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a fun show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty entertaining. I, where's it at? A and E, I think it was on. Oh, that's yeah. yeah that's, coming after that Blood Deck. A, had an A and E written all over it. Mm. That was A and E. That's what they're about. A uh-huh. and E's just, oh yeah, yeah, finding just the mess of people, and then just hoarders, <laughs> and then just exploiting them. Yeah, and it's a good time. Yeah, it's a pretty good. You enjoy it, don't you? Uh-huh. <laughs> Jennifer Weiss. No offense, but I'm 100 percent sure Nate would be one of the guards beating students, <laughs> and the students would definitely be Brigadoon. Brigadoon. <laughs> I think that's right. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> she's saying you get on board really quick with it yeah i just change character <laughs> and now get back get back bethany mix my best first date story involves a guy trying that 30 second question i stare a bit on me he tried to play it off as something his roommate who was in school for psychology wanted to know i had happened to read an article about it before the day before that date and knew what he was up to immediately but didn't let on that i knew three hours later after he had asked all 36 questions while sitting in a booth at top golf not hitting golf balls this is like a new story <laughs> we walked out to the parking lot to our separate cars and was one and i was wondering when the eye contact would happen he asked me to sit with him in his car i couldn't say no knowing what was coming and wanted to see this thing through to the end so we looked into each each other's eyes for four minutes inside his hard top convertible while I was <laughs> internally dying, dying of laughter. I uh, pol- politely left immediately after. Needless to say, we are not married, and there was no date number two. I'm not sure what the valid validity 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 <laughs> validity validity <laughs> validity sounds a lot funner. Yeah, you know. V- validity. I bet if you gave validity a choice, it would choose validity because it'd be like, I'd appreciate that. Like, that's a little more. And you go, No, you're validity. He goes, Come on, man. He goes, No one cares about validity. Let me be validity. That's like, val- that's validity is son. Valid, too. You don't yeah. say valid. Yeah. yeah. So he goes, Valid. He goes, Perfect. I'm validity. And they go, No, you're validity. He goes, That's stupid. <laughs> Of the claims that those questions make you fall in love, but they sure do make a great story, date story. I think uh, Bethany sounds like a fun girl. I was going to say, she's like a comic. Yeah. yeah. She did it I for love the it. joke. She's like, yeah. It's crazy, too, to think. She's like, I just re- happened to read an article about it. And so they're going to Top Golf. It's like on her phone. Yeah. It's just so kind of crazy to be like, you're just, she's like, oh, I was on my phone and I saw. Like, you just wouldn't, before the internet, you wouldn't see that. Right. There's no, like, in my head, I almost, 
if I'm thinking this is an old story, it's crazy that you think you realize that like, oh, people dating have only had phones. And like, you know, like, so like Bethany's like, oh yeah, I was just on my phone. Like that's all I've ever known. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I did it all, but. <laughs> yeah. You did like the old fantasy football league yeah. dating where you have to go, Che has to check the newspaper every day to see if she's going to call him back. <laughs> he goes, look at the box score to see how the date went. <laughs> did you ever do a speed dating? I don't no, know. I yeah. did that. So you didn't do it all. Well, I just, I've been the old way with before the phone and yeah. the new way with the phone. I, I tried what was phone. it before the phone? Just had to call people. <laughs> yeah. Cold call? Yeah. I just go through the cold, phone book. Yeah. Cold Hello. Call people. Hello. Uh, this is Brian Bates. Hold on. Before you hang up, I want to run this by you. I did like George Costanza yeah. selling the computers <laughs> when well, he and Lord Brian were in his yeah, dad's yeah. garage. Yeah. Would you like my computer? No. Why not? Okay. That makes great sense. <laughs> yeah. What would you do online dating? But once it started online, what would you do before online dating? Either friends would fix you up, oh, or yeah. you go to a bars or stuff. Yeah, yeah. But and there just was kind of like, sidle up to somebody. Yeah, there was just walk around. It's also well, I didn't. But. Yeah, he just out in his parking lot. <laughs> wait till they walk out, <laughs> and then Brian gets out of his car. Excuse me. Runs up to him. Sidle. Yeah. Hi, I noticed you inside, and they're like, oh, and this is when like Jeffrey Dahmer's like <laughs> rolling. <laughs> like, I mean, it's like that's how I mean, that's how he you go to a bar in Chicago, wasn't Jeffrey Dahmer? Like, I think he, he I've been to the bar where he would sit and watch people. Oh. I think there was classifieds though, where like you would, that, yeah, yeah, call and they put the yeah, Seinfeld has that where she wrote her. Well, that's the on the speedo, no, when uh. The, I don't know. It doesn't matter. Uh, but yeah, that that is yeah. Did you do fantasy football where y'all did the box score, right? Yeah, I've been in a league for twenty six years now, same mm -hmm. league. And when we started, you literally had to go through the newspaper and tally it up to find out who won. Yeah, for like the first yeah. probably eight years of our league, yeah, we did that. Yeah, so you just don't. <laughs> you're just watching the games. You have no idea how well you're doing. I mean, you're trying still... to keep up with your head. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. There's some there was something great about the box school. Like there's something great about waiting the next day. Yeah. And like, you know, I mean, obviously it's better, but I looked at some box scores this past weekend. Uh see what's happened. So usually going into Monday night football, if you have a guy, you uh, know okay. you know what, what he needs need. to do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's funny. Uh discovery episodes. This is the the comments on that. Neil Curan. Curan. Do we read these? Right? I took a class in college on accidental discoveries. The class was called Serendipitous Science. Huh? Nice. Nailed, yeah. it. Nailed that one. And it was pretty rough. True story. At the end of the semester, the professor pulled me aside and told me endearingly that I reminded him of his late son. <laughs> I thought that was nice until my grades came in and I got a C minus. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> So maybe the guy didn't care for his son. Maybe so. I guess that's the story. Maybe some is very average. Yeah. And that's a, he goes, I thought I reminded you of your late son. He goes, yeah, and he would have got a C minus as well. Y'all both put in about the same amount of effort. <laughs> yeah, my son's a loser. loser. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Phil Towler. My favorite episodes are the ones where Nate gets exasperated by the topic or generally where the conversation is going. The Discovery episode is a perfect example. When Nate said, are we done? And Babylon Brian Bates come back, comes, comes back with Velcro, I was in stitches. The lack of direction is what makes this gold, Jerry. Hmm. D. Mary. Or Marie. D. Marie. D. Mary. M A R I E. It's Marie, isn't it? You nailed it? serendipitous. I was like, this guy's getting better. He's getting good. Marie tripped you up. D Marie. D Marie. That's a good name. It is. D, D Marie. Marie. D Marie. I bet people think that's her first name. Yeah, it's like a. She goes, I'm word. D Marie. And they go, oh, mm -hmm. what's your last name? No, it's Marie. And then it's just, I bet her whole life is like. <laughs> You know, just frustrated. Just, it's just how many times you have to explain that your no, D, whole life. So D, uh -huh. let's stop. Let's walk in another room. And then you lock the person, last name Marie. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's how much separation you have to put it in. How you doing? My name's D. Follow me. Let's go in here. <laughs> Talk about something else. How's the weather? Where are you from? Marie. 
And they go, oh, it's that. So it's two names. I am a special education teacher in Michigan. And Nate, you are a true role model. It is inspiring to see an adult who has learned to read despite possibly having dyslexia (laughs) and never knowing you had it. Sadly, it may be more common than we think. P.S. Light colored printer paper or colored overlays is a known strategy for dyslexia. Larger print may also help. Mm. Mm. You're going to see me reading one comment. It's like, (laughs) I'm a special education teacher in Michigan. (laughs) And Nate, you are a true role (laughs) model. Like That's how big the print gets. (laughs) Just every... It is in spy Whoa. I just can't. Yeah. Stack of paper this yeah, big. Yeah, yeah. For All it. different colors. Can't, yeah. You just can't see. You finally can see me on camera. Just coming in and done. That nailed everything. You ever see somebody making a speech at like a wedding or something and you're like, God, this is going on so long. And then you see like they have like 10 more oh, papers yeah. coming in. You're like, you're like oh, oh, no. Man. That's the, well, we talked about that one, the, the, when someone says, yeah. I'll get to that. Yeah. yeah. I'll get to that later. And you're like, oh, no. There's going to be a later. later there's going to be a later. We're not <laughs> even to that. Yeah. yeah. I've heard someone say, I'll get to that later. And they get to it pretty quick, which is kind of funny. Yeah. You're happy that they get to it quick. But then it's like, that's not later. Don't say that. You know, don't be like, I'm going to get to that later. But right now, all right, I'll talk about that. And then they get into it. You're like, well, just get into it. I think people put that stuff in there when because they're that's writing out a speech. So when you write out, it doesn't ever sound, you write much more like professional. Like mm-hmm. you, it, you don't talk like that. Yeah, nobody you, does. Nobody does. And so that's what I always learned with writing comedy. I, well, I didn't like writing it out word for word. Because when I write out for word for word, I would have like a lot of jokes in there. And I remember even thinking like, oh, these are all good jokes. But it, but then if I tried to say it like that, it was like, well, this sounds terrible. Mm-hmm. And even the joke is funny written. It's not funny when I say it. But you can put more jokes in because when you look at it, even like when I do a Tonight Show and you got to type out your set for the lawyers. So they have to, like for standards and practices or whatever. Mm-hmm. So they have to approve it. Like you sit there and you'll be, I'll be like typing my set out. And A, you see, I'll say like a lot. And then, so you see where, how many times you do that. But uh, you can then be like, oh, maybe if I added a joke here. And you're like, no, nah, it just doesn't yeah. flow like All that. Right. You're yeah. like, uh, it doesn't work like that. Uh, Mike Wilson, I'm a, a podiatrist. <laughs> I don't know. Podiatrist. Podiatrist. Yeah. That's how that's spelled? Yeah. <laughs> wow. How would you think podiatrist is spelled? <sighs> Podiatrist. A, maybe? Podiatrist. Oh, P-A. Uh, P-A. P-A-D? Podiatrist <laughs> is bad. I was hoping you were going to say what it is, and it would be something I'd never heard of. Uh-huh. <laughs> that's where I was at with podiatrist. I'm a podiatrist. Okay, you wouldn't you wouldn't go to that guy, <laughs> would he? <laughs> to a podiatrist. Podiatrist. Podiatrist sounds so much better. Yeah, I'm a podiatrist. You're like, oh, this guy's a pretty good podiatrist. And if you're like, my uncle's a podiatrist. You're like, oh my god, <laughs> what did he? Oh, <laughs> I think you can't. The only way to become that you can't go to college. <laughs> you go to college, you're already out of the running for to be a podiatrist. <laughs> I'm a podiatrist, and yes, the gold standard for diagnosing gout is taking a joint sample. And I fully endorse Nate jabbing a needle into Aaron's foot for science. We'll Ooh. do it. We'll do it. So the po- that's a real science doctor said that. Yeah. Podiatrist. According to Seinfeld, that's not a real doctor. Yeah. What did he say? Didn't uh, Elaine a data podiatrist or something? Uh, yeah, no, it was the skin. Because at the end of he his- dated a, uh, a dermatologist. Yeah. But didn't Elaine die? Pimple popper? Did, yeah. MD? Did she date a podiatrist or something? I don't know. And she didn't like it because they didn't consider him a real doctor? Uh, Yeah, I don't know. Okay. Jess Gay. Nate taking the quiz off the internet reminded me when Michael Scott was performing an intervention on Meredith and asked, have you ever <laughs> questioned the teachings of the Mormon church? <laughs> <laughs> it's a great episode. Yeah. All right. Oh. 1980s. Uh. And these are the last ones. Eric Barden. 
This podcast needs a disclaimer that says, don't listen to this podcast if working out. I was bench pressing when Donnie said he got an autograph from a high school basketball player <laughs> during the 1980s episode. I lost it and dropped the dumbbells, nearly crushing my chest. This isn't the first time. I dropped a barbell on my foot during a previous episode out of pure laughter. I don't do abs on Wednesday because of how hard I laugh. It's very nice. I mean, I almost got killed, but <laughs> I appreciate it, Eric. <laughs> And you still fought through it. Uh, Teresa Brown. I was about 14 when Dallas was a big show in the 80s. My parents did not allow me to watch it. I made a case that I wanted to watch that show. And they said, if you talk to the pastor about it, and he said if it was, it was okay, that I could watch it. So we go to church and talk to Pastor Tim. And he says that he watches it every week. So I finally got to watch Dallas. Victory. Ooh. That's pretty good. I mean, to know to do that yeah. at 14, to uh. make a case. That's funny that the pastor was like, yeah, I love it. I mean, that was like a nighttime soap. Yeah. Yeah. But it was a pretty big show. But, I mean, it, but they're just, surprising. it was a huge show. Like, yeah. it was the number one show. Yeah. You know. But there was a lot of, I mean, it's not that risque now, but at the time, it yeah. felt like it seemed like. It oh, was. there was? It was like, a, were you allowed to watch it? Yeah, I mean. We, well, I mean, he is. <laughs> and he was just graduating college. Dude. I mean, like, what are you talking about? He didn't live at home. I, nobody tells me what to yeah. do about Dallas at that point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, my parents had, if I wanted to see a movie, they had like two families that they would call and just see, like, what are your thoughts? Are you letting your kid do this? Yeah. Yeah. And I could always be like, it was the Glomboskis, was their name. And, was, and they wouldn't let me do something. I'd go, well, the, Josh gets to do it. And they're like, oh. Okay, we'll let so you. So your parents do it. just kind of got lazy. They just, <laughs> yeah, they just trusted that family. Yeah, They're trusted like, you. They trusted yeah. you, and then they got lazy about calling. Oh, that is. I never thought about that. Yeah. yeah, they did trust me a lot. I guess you figured out what the thing was. Sometimes they would call, but I never lied about yeah. that. Oh, uh, okay. Because yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah, they yeah. call and verify. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, then, but if they trusted you and they knew you weren't lying, you said Josh is doing it. it you, you know, because they could. I think a lot of parenting is. I would be willing if your dad was like, yeah, I never really called. But yeah. he called maybe enough to that you're like, well, he will call. Yeah. So then he knows like. That's probably what it was. Yeah. yeah. Can you get, think of an example? Remember something? I wanted to see a movie called Kangaroo Jack. With Paul Hogan? I, 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 this was a, I don't know. Paul, it was a, came out in like the early 2000s. All right. Okay. Is that the one you're thinking of? I feel like. Paul Fairly Hogan. recently. And I remember my parents had like some Catholic website where like you they had reviews for movies and yeah. how inappropriate stuff was. Yeah, and uh, they wouldn't let me go see it. And but Josh was getting to see it, so they called and they go, "You're letting them go see? What'd you read about this movie?" Mm. That's the kind of yeah investigative work they do. Right? Yeah, wow. Well, you know? get to the bottom of that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he asked for an example. I know, yeah. I know. That was my fault. Yeah, <sighs> just a quick one. Or maybe Jack. filter it out and go, the example's not that good. <laughs> David Locke. It sounds like Nate has a problem with people enjoying movies that he doesn't like. Yeah, there you Perfect go. Timing. Perfect timing. There you go. <laughs> it's right on. Uh, it's enjoying, uh, what was that about? That's about your 30-minute rant about Marvel movies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In the 1980s episode. <laughs> yeah. We had two or three on board with you. Said Finally, someone said it. And about yeah. 50 that it's like We're furious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, no, people love that world. I get it. It's like Star Wars. It's like all that. People love the, you know, enjoy. Well, you enjoy were talking your... about how redundant, repetitive everything is. And then at the end, you're like, they should make a new Iron Man or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Transformers. Or... Yeah. yeah, Transformers. That's I would it. watch all the Transformer movies. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't. You don't have to listen to me. If you like Marvel, I get it. I get the idea of it. I guess you're on a journey with it. It's fun mm-hmm. if you're like, well, they all like it. Yeah, there's like twenty something movies that all led up to Avengers Endgame. Like, they were all yeah. tied in in their own way, and then the payoff was that final Avengers movie. Yeah, and so now it's done. Yeah, I mean, obviously they're still making Marvel movies, yeah. and they're trying to find ways to new characters keep it going. But for from Iron Man, the first one up till Endgame, twenty something movies later, they all tied in. Man, how do you remember? I don't know. They're very good. Yeah, maybe that's maybe maybe I don't appreciate it. Maybe I need to go through it at all. Mm-hmm. Is yeah. that Spider Man too? Mm-hmm. Iron Man, Batman, and Iron Man. Like, did they ever cross paths? 
Batman's no. DC. DC. Yeah. So that will be the next big trick is if they can get DC. If they team up with. They the, team up. Team it, have yeah. they ever had that happen? I think. Uh, I don't know. Maybe in the comic books. Yeah. I mean, those are two different companies, so they probably not. But or maybe people have created their own scenarios where. Yeah. Yeah. DC and Marvel fight each other. There have been crossovers in comic books. Yeah. In the nineties, but but nothing in nothing in the movies. Yeah. So. I mean, DC tried it now with Justice League. That's their version of Avengers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But that's not. But that's their... <laughs> so their attempt. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, like, you need... So Spider-Man's Marvel. Mm-hmm. DC is Superman. Mm-hmm. So you need them to meet. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, they all live in the same city. I don't know I mean, how they're not crossing paths. There's a lot of stuff online about... Who, how are they not, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, how are they... <laughs> <laughs> they live next to each other. They don't just see Spider Man's whipping around yeah. and Batman's like I know he's more of night owl. Yeah, yeah he doesn't but yeah. Superman's working at the newspaper. Uh-huh. Yeah. It's not covering these Spider Man stories. Peter Parker <laughs> was a when he a newspaper photographer? Yeah. He's a photographer, so yeah. They probably are on the same story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's why. <laughs> uh uh, you know a movie I watched that was uh, that I think I was on board with Glory. No, yeah, this, this is this is uh, why I don't listen to me when I talk about Marvels and <laughs> just uh, I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, M- uh, Medea's Witness <laughs> Protection Plan. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler Perry. I watched the whole thing. Yeah, it was a good. Watched the whole thing on TV. We're at a fast. I, I, <laughs> I let it get a little bit ahead <laughs> so I could fast forward through the commercials on Bravo. I was I, uh, completely on board with it. The whole thing. I loved it. Yeah. Oh, it's got Denise well, What's it about? What's the plot of this? What do you think it's about? <laughs> I'm going to guess Medea has to go and witness protection. Actually, not true. Actually, yeah. opposite. Oh, she has to bring in people? She has to bring in people. Oh. And, Is that Eugene uh, Levy? Yeah. And it's like, you know what? I was trying to think, like, why do I like, why am I, I'm watching it, you know, and I'm like, I don't know. I just enjoyed it. And, <laughs> uh, and I feel like she's very, uh, or Medea, it's Tyler Perry, <laughs> but Medea is just kind of like, uh, you know, she's talking like the youngest, uh, the youngest daughter, Eugene Levy's daughter is like a spoiled brat uh-huh. and she's you know and she's like dad i hate you and Medea's like oh she said i hate uh-huh. to his to her father she's uh-huh. like he's like i'm i'm Medea's whole thing is like, i'm about to punch this kid yeah. in the face for talking like and i think it was like that it was like that's almost like i you miss like you miss that like kind of like politically incorrect kind of uh you know like the Medea as a uh, you know they i feel like with Tyler Perry, like an older black lady can just be like on this, she can be like, you ain't gonna talk to your father like that. Like I'll, like they still have that yeah. very funny way. And now like all this other stuff is like, you can't say that stuff about kids. You can't, mm. if your kid talks back to you, it's your yeah. fault. You can't yeah. do this stuff. And it's just a very simplistic way of just being like, I'm going to spank you. It's like an old, you know, would be an old hacky joke, but mm-hmm. now it's not yeah. because you can't do that stuff anymore. Uh-huh. So then for some reason, it was like, I enjoyed watching it again. Like it felt like, you know, when did they make that movie? I don't know when they made it. I like that. But like, it's like, it's, you know, it's just like very old school. 2012. 2012. So maybe you could say that. It's a I mean, different that was, time. It's a different time. So it was like almost like that's what I enjoyed. Yeah. yeah. And like, that's what I was like, I liked seeing that. I get that. I, when I watch stuff with, uh, with Lucy, I get furious when the way kids talk to their parents in some of yeah. these movies. Yeah. And I go, dude, does anyone talk to their family like this? I just, I have never now. seen it. Yeah. I don't know. But I, it's like that, like you can't talk like that. Yeah. The like, kids like run the house, they run the family, yeah, they yeah. cuss in front of them doing drugs. Yeah. It's like, golly. Yeah. I think that's what made me like it. Like it was. <laughs> You know, we watched uh, Ruth had never seen Planes, Trains, and Automobiles. Yeah, we watched that this weekend. I feel like that holds up. It's oh yeah, still it's, very, it's really, very good. John Candy is so. I know yeah. we've talked about it on here. He's so good at it. Yeah, it's like mm-hmm. Ted Lasso to me. He's very positive, uh-huh. and you just want to like him. Yeah, you yeah. see season two of Ted Lasso yet? Not yet. Not yet. It's out though, everybody. Yeah. Season two, Ted Lasso. 
Mary Ellen Goodwin. I was glad to hear Nate say he was not allowed to watch The Simpsons. I wouldn't let my kids watch it either. Uh, I'm nailing talking about something before the top. Yeah, you are. And I'm not even reading these until well, we can it's just really worked out. <laughs> Kendall Eaton. Imagine him, imagining Beachbody with his NKOTB shirt. New kids. New kids on the block <laughs> shirt on in high school. Honestly, made me think I would have been one of his best friends. <laughs> I always tried to uh, I tried to go out of my way to be nice to the weirdy the weird nerdy kids <laughs> that nobody wanted to be seen with. Oh my god. I'm not saying I would have hung out with the guy or anything, considering obviously he's a loser. I'm mad I'm mad <laughs> yes. uh, second. Oh yeah, that's that, maybe it didn't say that. Sorry, I have trouble. trouble. You know I have trouble reading, dude. Uh, or even considered him one of my friends. I just think he would have been would have considered me one of his best friends for talking to him. I like the honesty in that by Kendall Eaton. <laughs> the honesty that Kendall, you'd be like, all right, so y'all be friends. He's like, no, obviously not, dude. He's a, a loser, <laughs> but I would let him think it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I probably have some of that. You probably have a, yeah, like that's, that's like very honest to go like, no, dude, I would. I would let him wear my sh shirt with my face, which mm. he might do because he would ask for <laughs> autographs of children. <laughs> I had a few people say, man, I felt sorry for you in high school. I actually love my high school years. Yeah. People weren't, weren't as mean to me about that shirt as they should have been, quite frankly. Uh -huh. I mean, people were actually pretty understanding considering. Yeah. yeah. And I had fun in high school. Our 30-year class reunion is this weekend. Are you uh, going? I'm, I'm going to be out of town with him, but I'm on the committee. But <laughs> yeah. I prepare everything, but I'm not going to be able to be there. It's actually our 31, but uh, last year got delayed because yeah. of COVID. Yeah. So. Uh, well, let me read these, and then I want to talk about that. If, uh, if you have a credit balance month after month, it can feel like you are a never-ending cycle of debt. Upstart can help you make that final payment so you can get ahead. So many people, so many people had financial financial hardships in the last year. Upstart can help you get back on your feet and get things back on track. Upstart is the fast and easy way to pay off your debt with a personal loan all online. Unlike other lenders, Upstart considers your income and current employment to find you a smarter rate for your loan. Just a five-minute online rate check, you can see your rate up front for loans between $1,000 to $50,000. You can receive funds as fast as one business day after accepting your loan. Find out. How Upstart can lower your monthly payments today when you go to upstart.com slash Nate. That's upstart.com slash Nate. Don't forget to use our URL to let them know that we sent you loan amounts. will be determined based on your credit, income, and certain other information provided in your loan application. Go to upstart.com slash Nate. Also, thank you uh, to our great friends at Viore for sponsoring this episode of Nate Land. Viore is a new outlook on performance apparel. Perfect if you're sick and tired of traditional old workout gear. It's awesome. It's very comfortable. Everything's designed to work out in, but it looks great too. You can go run. Or, people are wearing, I watched a guy wearing all workout stuff. I thought about that. Where was I at? Somewhere. And he's got gym shorts, zanies. And like, you know, it's like everybody just wearing work at workout stuff now. Uh -huh. Everybody just, and you wear it out. Yeah. And, uh, and so you want to look good if you do that because it's very comfortable. It's nice to do. I have the Sunday performance joggers and they're very comfortable. Ordering online is very easy. The website is not cluttered. It's very easy to pick styles and color options and everything has a great fit to it. Do yourself a favor and get your own Viore. Viore is an investment in your happiness. For our listeners, they are offering 20% off your first purchase. Get yourself some of the most comfortable and versatile clothing on the planet at viori.com slash Nate. That is V-U-O-R-I.com slash Nate. Not only will you receive 20% off your first purchase, but enjoy free shipping on any U.S. orders over $75 and free returns. Viori.com slash Nate and discover Viori clothing like we all do. Did you know two out of three uh, men will experience some form of hair loss by the time they are uh, 35? Huh? <laughs> Two out of three. Mm. Are you next, Aaron? <laughs> it's one of us. I'm good. I'm already past the point. I'm not losing my hair. Oh, it's you. Then. I don't think that's how it works. Yeah, it is. Oh, uh, it's. I won't. You say if you're not bald by now, it'll never happen. Yeah, I would put the odds on me. I'm too old. <laughs> I had a full head of hair when I was your age. Yeah. <laughs> Give I keeps a try. I think this seems so easy. You don't have to go out to the doctor. You can get prescription medication delivered to your home, and it's very affordable. If you notice thin hair, this is the time to try Keeps. So if you're, this is not if you're completely bald, 
it's probably not happening. <laughs> but this is what it is. If you're starting to, get, I'm being honest. If you're if you're noticing that your hair is getting thin, this is the time you got to try keeps because you keep the hair that you have. You're hanging on. <laughs> if you want to keep it, keeps.com. <laughs> Did you, uh, Keeps offers a simple, stress-free way to keep your hair. There are only two FDA-approved medications that can prevent hair loss, and Keeps offers both. That is pretty cool. They have virtual doctor consultants and medications delivered straight to your door every three months so you don't have to leave your home. The treatment starts at only $10 per month, and Keeps offers generic versions. Discreet packaging and proven results. Keeps has more five-star reviews than any of its competitors. Prevention is key. Treatments uh, can take four to six months to see results. So act fast. You can do it. You can keep your hair. If your hair is starting to thin, this is the time to do it. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Nate to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com slash Nate to get your first month free. Keeps dot com slash Nate. Uh, so, uh, yeah, this week, uh, well, I mean, I guess we're kind of just catching up uh you know we haven't been here we haven't got to talk to everybody um uh, so uh you were you're not going to the your the big reunion no i mean i i i would like to but i also want to do these shows with you and leanne so yeah mm -hmm. me and Le leanne morgan are gonna be in hattiesburg uh mississippi that show's sold out and then uh tupelo uh mississippi we're doing an arena uh there's tickets still available for that uh, so, uh, you can go to my website and see all that stuff. Uh, all that stuff. We added an Opry to the third op or third show in Nashville. It's crazy, man. Two Opry's and a Ryman said only me and, uh, Johnny Cash. Only two people have ever done that. Really? really? No, I don't know. <laughs> but that sounds good, doesn't it? it sounded yeah, awesome. It sounded awesome, didn't it? I was like, yeah. Now, you know what? I'll be honest with you. Johnny Cash could never do it. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. 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 yeah Johnny Cash wish he could have done something like that. Um, uh, I don't know. No one's. Uh, I don't know who's done it. Yeah. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I don't know if anybody's ever tried. Yeah. yeah. Like there, uh, uh, Garth Brooks sold out fifty Bridgestones <laughs> or Titan Stadium. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we added that. We've added some other shows. Uh, it's all going out. Uh, but I mean, I feel bad that you're missing your thirty year. You know, I mean, you see these people kind of regularly anyway. Um, I mean, I see some of my closest friends pretty regularly. How many people did you graduate with? There was about 325. How many are alive? <laughs> 14. Four, only 14. Man, Wendell down. Uh, a lot of, well, a lot of y'all had to go to war. <laughs> uh, he got drafted. A lot of them got drafted right out of school. Can you believe that? You know, yeah. I was, we should talk about this in the 90s episode, but when the Gulf War happened, like 91, I was the age where if there was a draft, I would have been drafted. Uh -huh. That war would have been a lot different. Were you worried about it at that point? Not really, but there was some talk about having to do a draft or something mm -hmm. like that. <laughs> I don't know. There's not much talk. Yeah. I don't know. Whether, there was a lot of talk about it? Some talk, I said. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it, would, it would come up. In the, in the Lebanon uh, Herald. <laughs> like, then they saw the guys that were the yeah. age, and they were like, no, nah, we're definitely not doing the honest. draft Let's just now. try to do it ourselves. What if we go younger? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I always thought I I almost I wish I would have joined the military. Uh I almost did. And uh which I did gotta go over and do shows overseas, which was nice because I felt like I gotta do something. Uh but if I would have joined, my fourth year would have been nine eleven. Like I never would have got out. Yeah. Like, you know, it's kinda you just start like so I would, I was eighteen. It's been kind of crazy. Your fourth your last year that you have to serve, 9-11 mm -hmm. happens. And you're yeah. just like, I mean, wow, you know, uh, could have all been different. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, Aaron, any wars happen in the year? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got, there's a lot of wars going on still, right? <laughs> yeah. I was never worried about being drafted. Culture wars. The uh, yeah. yeah, the war on Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, you it's guys get your feeling. When is the first time your feelings got hurt, Aaron? <laughs> What's up? What's Aaron? Tell us the first time you remember hearing a mean word said to you. I do remember that. Do you? No, not uh, really. <laughs> can you remember the Iraq War? Oh yeah, I remember my dad woke us up and we all watched George Bush at at the situ at the desk, mm. saying we're going to war. He's like, we need to watch this because he knew it was about to happen. Yeah, and I was too young to even understand what that really yeah. meant. 
I guess I was 11 or 12. What time, was did, it, y'all go, what time did y'all go to bed? What, what do you mean? What time? When did he make that announcement? What time? I was, was in the it? morning, right? I don't think it was in the morning. Oh, so you'd already gone to bed that night. I think I think he night. woke us up. Yeah, what well, well, was like eight or nine p.m. But we're yeah. kids, so we're already <laughs> in bed. You know? Did you gasp when you heard yeah. about it? <laughs> I mean, you go, Father! <laughs> I've got a busy day tomorrow. How dare you! And you put on your robe and then ran in there and then, the sleep. What has happened? <laughs> With the hat, the ball. Of yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> What is our president saying? He's <laughs> we're going to war, Father. Hmm. I like yeah. to think. I thought the announcement. When would they? What would they have made the announcement? Like I was thinking, is it two in the morning, or is it like? No, I, I, feel I think like, it was prime time. I think you wait till yeah. you got some eyeballs on you. Yeah, yeah. And then you let the world. know. I think they we're launched the offensive, and then they word gets out, and he makes an official announcement. What's going on? Yeah. No, he got the ball rolling first. No, I think. They got the ball rolling first with some missiles or something. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah, and then he yeah. came on. Let's do this announcement. Let, they just shot at us. All right, we'll do it right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's how quick it turned. All right, go ahead and do it now. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, well, what we've been doing, what we've been up to, so I, I, I'm wearing a San Francisco Giants hat. I was in, uh, so we did Vegas. Vegas was amazing. Nick, uh, my dad, the shows were awesome. Reno was awesome. Uh uh, awesome time and i go to la for a little bit and i went to the dodgers uh giants game uh justin uh galindo has uh, been one of my tour managers uh and he goes out the gaffigan as well uh but he justin like texted me it was great because i was in la and mm-hmm. i didn't like you know you just i was only there for like a couple of days so i didn't think about like looking at the and justin's from la so he's a dodger fan and uh and then he knows mike Yashimsky, who we know or I know, like from he played at Vandy, now plays for the Giants, and so then it was like, oh, they're they're in town, so I went to the game. Yeah, and it was awesome. And Yaz, I mean, I posted on. Yeah, Instagram. I wanted to ask you about this. Yeah, so if you may saw it on Instagram, I posted the night before. I was like, I texted him to say like, hey, can we go? Yeah. Uh, you know, do you, can I go to the game? And it's in L.A. I didn't want to, you know, L.A. I'm sure is a tough place to ask him for tickets. And mm-hmm. you know, there's baseball players. Some of them they have to pay for their tickets. Oh, really? Really? Uh, some they only get so many. I don't know if he maybe he didn't have to pay for these. I mean, I would not want him to pay. But like sometimes, if like stuff gets crazy, you only get so many. I mean, there's so many players. So I'm sure they. I'm look. I'm sure if you're there's there's levels of you know if Nolan Ryan wanted tickets during right. Nolan Ryan's heyday they were like yeah you can have them yeah uh, and uh, so but Yaz got us uh, the tickets uh, uh, and I'm lucky to be, be the great seats great seats yeah. looks, like the, looks like the Dodgers manager right there in front of you I'm on the Giants side I was with the family family and friends section oh uh, and so. We're sitting there. Kirk Casale also uh, plays for the Giants, and then uh, Giants are maybe the best team in baseball yep, this year. Yep. Yeah, they're unreal. And so I texted him, uh, and I, you know, when we were texting about it, I was like, "Hey, if uh, you know, thanks again. I'm glad this worked out. Home run, really top it off, and no pressure." And he's like, "Yeah, that's easy." Uh, it's like and, Paul O'Neill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, if I if so I thought cool. Yaz would get the reference, I was going to text. It. Also, catch a ball in your hat. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, but he hit a home run. It's amazing. And it was great. We were sitting in those seats, and then me and Justin go walk to the because where those seats were, you got like club access up at the top to go eat. So we get up and we go eat in the right field. So we're like upper level right field eating, and we're sitting there, and we got great seats there too. We're not close, and uh, he hits it to the right field, and so we're right there as wow. it comes over the fence. And uh, I, I did think, I was like, one of you guys, like, you know, he gets home, I'm, yeah. I'm thinking he's look, going to look at me. <laughs> he's like, finally, he points at me. I'm not, I'm not there. That's for you, kid. That's for you. He went, uh, opened up, hit a home run the next day uh, as well. And then I haven't looked past that. <laughs> yeah. But they, uh, they, they lost that game. Uh, walk off three run home run Dodgers. Right, right, I mean, right. man, it was crazy. Mm-hmm. And then they won the, the other game. They won in that fashion uh but the giants won uh so yeah it was awesome it was it was fun to uh get to go there's a lot of vanny walker bueller pitches for the dodgers yeah. uh yeah. mookie betts nashville guy right. i've golfed with him uh and uh joe kelly uh pitches for the dodgers uh-huh. and we grew up with uh my parents my parents and his parents like went to school together oh that's together. cool yeah 
And they uh, and he's younger than me. My dad performed at his birthday party when he was five. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then he, I mean, he's younger than he's younger than me, but he pitches for them. Yeah, yeah. So. He always does something entertaining. He like blows a kiss at the other team or stuff. He's awesome. yeah. He's fun. Well, he traded his shirt the yeah. other day for like uh, uh, oh, a Hawaiian shirt or no? He traded his jersey for a oh yeah, like a uh, what's the uh, Mexican band? Yeah, I forgot. I don't know if that's how you're supposed to say it. <laughs> mariachi band. Mariachi yeah. band. <laughs> See, that's so much <laughs> podiatrist. Uh, <laughs> Hey, this Mexican band's coming over again. That sounds like just an old dad that you're like, Dad, it's a mari mariachi. Yeah, why is every mariachi yeah. band Mexican? <laughs> well, it's Marcus Mariota band. So it looks like it's a full stadium. They have no in L.A., no mask or anything required? So they just did the mask thing that you had to wear a mask inside. But, I mean, I think outside – I mean, it was kind of great to see, to be honest. Yeah. Because I was super, I thought I'm going to go to LA and they're going to, they just put that mask thing. I was like, I'm going to, everybody's going to have a mask on. That's what you think, mm -hmm. California. I have hope for the country yeah. that I walked in there and there was no mask. Oh, that's awesome. They were just like not wearing it and not saying you should or shouldn't or whatever, right. be vaccinated. Uh, I don't, none of that stuff. I'm just saying it felt, I thought I'm going to wear a mask outside. Uh -huh. I thought people would be doing that. And it was like, the people don't care. And it was nice to see. And they were cheering. And uh, it was fun. Yeah. So anyway, what did you two losers do? <laughs> well, I was just trying I did, to make uh, I'm joking. That was, <laughs> people, that was a good transition. Yeah. I have to transition somehow. Y'all were not picking up. Uh, Y'all didn't, didn't, you know. Keep the momentum going? Keep the momentum going. giving me carte blanche to hop in and change the topic at any point? Uh, let's see. You can try. <laughs> yeah, okay. You can try. Okay, you'll give me, you give me one try. Your volition. See, I'll save it. Yeah. I'll save it. I'm throwing out the first pitch at a Nashville Sounds game. Really? Next month. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, against Memphis. Oh, Ooh. wow. September 7th. That's crazy. Trying September to, 7th. I'm trying to think of my strategy, dude. Yeah. It's funny because I went to Sounds game recently, and I just saw some dude from, like, the Tennessee lottery throughout the first pitch. Yeah, I was yeah. like, I could do this. We when just emailed them, and they were like, all right. Oh, really? <laughs> just, yeah, I just want to throw out the first yeah. pitch. You do? And they were like, sure. okay. Yeah. I was going to have to do it, so thank <laughs> yeah. you. That's what it felt like. It was like, I mean, we were trying to find people to do this. <laughs> That's like when yeah. someone, uh, like, you have to have someone introduce you, like, at a theater. You're like, you have to get someone on the side. You're like, hey, can we bring the God voice? Yeah, God, yeah, the yeah. voice of God. Like, yeah. please welcome. Nabar gets, and you just, if someone... If someone's like, "Oh, I'll do it," that sounds fun. And you're the other, you, when you're like the opener, because the opener usually has to do it. You're like, mm -hmm. "Oh yeah, dude, that'd be great. You're welcome to do it." Mm -hmm. And you're like, "Oh, I didn't know." Yeah. You think it's this big deal, and he's like, "You, you yeah." You, well, that's nobody what, wants to. Do I, it. I watched the dude do the first pitch, and, I'm, and nobody's paying attention. Yeah. I mean, nobody's watching. It's the mascots catching it, but I'm like, <laughs> I want to do it. Is there even a game that night? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, the mascot's catching it? The mascot has a, a catcher's mitt. The, the rooster gets down behind home plate. They don't even bother. <laughs> and them. I don't know what the rules are. I think they tell you you can't. I would love to pitch from the mound. Yeah. I think they tell you you can't. Well, people always just go to the mound. But not all the way up on it. You can't they go do. up on the rubber. I've never seen it. The Bush did it. After 9-11, but he can do it every uh, once. I think there's a lot of people that – I think there's a lot of people they go, I'm going to go do it. I think you'll notice most people do it from the front of the mound. I know, but I think some they tell you not to, then they do it because they go, I'm not going to go out there and not pitch from – Are you they... saying that's what I should do? Here's the only thing. I, 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 I got still like old rule following in me that I think – it's like they don't want you to do it because it's like the pitcher's got to go I up there. I get it. There's yeah. something that you go like, just do what they want you to do. I get up there to start yeah. digging a hole. And yeah. Then <laughs> just pick up the rosin bag. Yeah. The, well, there's, there's, there. I think there's someone that has done that has done something like that. I'm, I'm sure, sure you could find Bill Murray, so, maybe. Yeah. So like Bill Murray doing it, it's hilarious, and he can do. You got to get to the point where you're like, you can do whatever you want. Right. Otherwise, they're gonna be like, dude, why would we let you do? You're it? saying me doing it, they probably wouldn't be as cool. They might be like, <laughs> who is who this is guy? This? guy he's a gout survivor and then they go that's the announcement <laughs> that's the byline on the on the jumbotron yeah. everyone gives you a standing ovation local gout local survivor. gout survivor uh, throws out the first pitch you're like well i don't think he can even walk up to the top of that mound to be honest he has to stay on the flat part <laughs> no one even knows you do comedy uh -huh. he's a gout survivor oh that would be really funny what if i could yeah. get him to get him to put that you on, have to wear like a, I don't know, like a compression brown, socks. A brown ribbon. <laughs> you have a, I don't, I don't, I'm trying to think. It's a weird color, you know. 
Gout awareness. A ribbon pin on it's the a, shirt. A ribbon pin that's red and white because yeah. of tan lines in your feet. And so like it's like the it's like yeah. your legs and the red and white. And then that, uh-huh. that's the gout ribbon. Oh yeah, I'll have to get one made. Yeah. I'm excited about it. I'm gonna throw I'm gonna I'm gonna really go to practice. I'm gonna whip it in there. Are you gonna practice with Lucy? Like have her in the yard? <laughs> not, not with Lucy. Yeah. Somebody who could do we catch. need to throw some I I got I'll I'll catch with yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we'll warm up. Yeah. You want to practice doing the first pitch to him? It's like going to a rooster. <laughs> I'll do. I'll let you get warmed up with me, and right. then uh, the rooster walks out. And we'll simulate it with yeah. Brian. Yeah. Simulate it. Yeah. But anyway, that's kind of a cool. It was. It was so funny how easy it was to. <laughs> you just never think. I'll just ask if I could do it, yeah. and they're like, "Sure, go yeah. ahead." But I'm pumped. September seventh. Man, we're playing Memphis, so I'm gonna be there. Well, we you want to come, Brian? Absolutely. Yeah, let's do it. Film this. What day is that? It's a Tuesday. Oh, maybe Tuesday I'll night. be there. Yeah, you should. Yeah. <laughs> Every Nate shows uh, up, they're like, hey, we're just going to let Nate do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. But it still says gout survivors. Yeah. So everyone's still. Oh, I, gotta, I go, give me a ribbon, Aaron. I, I take your jersey that says Weber. They already went through. We already did the jersey thing. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, that's fun. Yeah. Yeah. that would be a good time. I'm trying, I'm trying to even, I don't know my schedule. I'm trying to think where I'm going to be. Uh-huh. Uh I'll be here. I don't think I'm going to be here, actually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think now you just made that, that up. Oh, when I yeah, think I that, No, I started thinking. I, said, I think I have to. I, all right. Uh, but we're at video of it. You're go. I feel confident I'll yeah. be available. Yeah. Right. Anytime in September. Yeah. Wide or, open. Or August. <laughs> August. Wide open. <laughs> October. Whatever you want to do. Yeah. When uh, you want to do it. Whenever. Uh, I'm like that psychologist that does the experiment every 13 years. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Uh other news though you have some other news that uh yeah oh i'm doing just for laughs comedy festival and this is yeah well it's it's really cool first yeah. of all it's really cool to oh, do the first one up there it's a big deal well it's alphabetical but yeah that's fine I'll take it you take it but you luckily they did the first name and not the w yeah that's true now there's a line in my bio that says you can hear aaron on the nate land podcast with nate bargetzi and brian yeah. bates where they tackle important world issues like <laughs> fast food uh rhode island and so Islanders. well i said in my bio they left out the last part of that sentence so the last letter in this deadline the last sentence <laughs> of the deadline says you can hear Aaron on the Nate Land podcast where the three Nashville-based comedians tackle important world issues, and <laughs> yeah. then it just ends, <laughs> and it makes it look like I'm on a political <laughs> podcast on BBC or something. Yeah. Well, that's what we do, Aaron. Yeah. We tackle important world issues. You yeah. come here if you want to get stuff solved. Uh, it's uh, That's great, though, dude. New faces. Uh, it is a big deal. For people that don't know any of this because this is something that when you get it and you tell people i know that your family's like they don't know yeah they, they don't know what to, they're like right. oh they're just excited they're only excited because you're they can tell you're excited right and uh just for laughs is a huge festival and to be new faces is a very big deal so it's very it's great dude is it's it a one huge of the accomplishment thank, thank you man. it's uh you know it's like it's it's a it's a cool thing to have man like you gotta you gotta go through it's part of it. You're in the scene. You're in the system of, uh, you know, the business. You're, you know, it's cool. Not everybody gets it. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's a huge thing. What year did you do it? 2008, I think. So you would have been 29? Uh, Something like that? Uh, Same age as you? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, was it? Yeah, 2008? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See? How about it? One day. Yeah. And and how many years ago was that? 13 years? 13 years you'll be able to host your own podcast. Can you believe <laughs> In that? 13 years, Bates and I will have a podcast. Yes. <laughs> Aaron Lane and Bates, Batesville. Is there a new Batesville? There's a bunch now. Some of them don't even accounts. follow me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> really? I followed one of them. They didn't follow me back. <laughs> yeah. There's a bunch. Yeah. There's a Batesville, Bateland. Uh, it's kind of a survival of the fittest out there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if they create one, you yeah. gotta you gotta bring it. Right. So let's go, folks. Yeah. Oh, I've seen that one too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a lot of good stuff being Big made. Memes. Yeah. Brian's nose. <laughs> Brian's, Brian's nose <laughs> pops up every now and then. Yeah. 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 Uh, 
but congratulations, yeah. new faces. Congratulations, Thank you, new man. faces. Just flats. It's a huge, huge deal. Uh, and to get to do that is a, is a big deal. And I just got into old faces. So <laughs> old faces, so congratulations. Less known. <laughs> it's uh, in the uh, Sachiqua area of Canada, <laughs> and uh, you got to take a boat with uh, those those uh, floats on the bottom of it, and it lands in the lake. That's how you get to it, and you uh, you know. <laughs> A little less prestigious, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the weirdly, the plane never gets too high off the ground. Yeah. The whole route, <laughs> it's uh, pretty low. Uh, and you ask, "Are we ever going to go up?" And he goes, "No, it's pretty flat." And then you skid into the water and do a show. So <laughs> I did a show recently in Albany, Albany Funny Bone. You were just there as well. Uh-huh. I flew in the night before, and it was connecting flight through DC. And because of weather, I didn't land in Albany till like one thirty in the morning. And I've never been to Albany. I didn't realize just how small it is. Mm-hmm. But I come out and start calling an Uber, and it's searching, searching. And I found there's no Ubers available. They're just at that time of night. Yeah. And then I called cab companies. There's three cab companies. Only one answered, and the guy wouldn't pick me up. He said he already had somebody had pick up. Only guy in Albany, I guess, were in a cab. Then I called my hotel. They said we don't have shuttle service. And I'm. It's like two in the morning now. I'm just out there. The yeah. corner of first and first, just yeah. mm-hmm. trying to figure out what to do. There's another couple there, and I said, "Did you guys get an Uber? What'd you do?" And they're like, "No, we got a cab." And we quickly figure out that they're the ones that that guy. They called that guy, <laughs> and the guy said, "Look, where are you going?" I told him a hotel, and he said, "You can just ride with us." So he was going to like some other town or something. Uh-huh. So when he got there, the, he asked the cab driver if we can just give this guy a ride, and he didn't want to do it, but he he said yes. <laughs> So this nice couple, Isaac and Emily, just gave me a oh, ride to my hotel. Yeah, yeah, we we met in the whole wow. on the yeah. trip, and they gave me a ride to my hotel, and I got there like two thirty in the morning. Yeah, but if it wasn't for them, I don't know what I've done. Did you pay? I paid the guy. I gave yeah. Isaac. Yeah. Money. Yeah. And then he just went on his way. Yeah. But what were they doing? They just lived there. They were coming uh, to visit family, like yeah. it was his family reunion or something. And, yeah. And um, they were and no one in his family would pick him up. Maybe because it was so late or something. Yeah. That would be the, more the reason they go, you got to do me a favor. <laughs> well, I don't know. I didn't want it to turn to that. But uh, how long of a walk would that have been for you? I looked at it. It was, it was like an hour walk. Would you have done it? I guess you would have had to if everything else fell through. Right? I mean, I guess I would have. I had a contact for the funny bone. I obviously never met the guy that's on it. But yeah. I guess I would have called him yeah. and, and just told him the situation. Hope he comes and gets you. Yeah. Are you almost got to go back in the airport? Because you could go back in, right? Or is it doors locked? I think you could go back in. Yeah. And, and then, then just might as well, you could wait till six in the morning and go rent a car or something. Yeah. Or maybe by then Ubers would be running. They might not even have it. I mean, who knows? Yeah. I don't know. It would search and then it just eventually it would come up. No I, Ubers I got a lift at 3 a.m. in Albany today. <laughs> no problem. So I don't know. Did you not try Lyft? No, I think I tried all of them. Oh. <laughs> so you did. You That'd got be it. So funny. This, like that. literally this morning. This morning, I <laughs> took a, a Lyft at 3 a.m. in Albany to the airport. Huh. I scheduled it ahead of time. So maybe that's that's the difference. It's yeah, just so maybe. funny that you're describing. So I, yeah. I, I did but it you just with did? no problem. They yeah. showed Seven up hours on, ago? on time. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe it was the scheduling part. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> That's very funny. Yeah. Uh, all right. That's it's caught up. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's all I got. That's all. Uh, I didn't know. You know. So we had a lot of catch up. That was a lot of talking about yeah. uh, fun stuff we've been up to. I mean, everybody's been wondering. You know. <laughs> everybody's been like, "What's happening?" Yeah. Uh, Get a good Uber Lyft story <laughs> out of it. Uh, I zoned out for, I mean, a giant part of that. Uh-huh. I was like sitting there and I was like, well, Aaron's talking now. <laughs> How long have we been here? I go, what's happening? <laughs> uh, well, it was a great story you missed. No, I like the story. Yeah. I think it's very funny. <laughs> uh, so uh, this week uh, we wanted to do a state we obviously don't have a guest uh, from the state not that I, I guess we haven't looked into it do we know someone from uh, I know someone from Alaska I know someone actually. from Alaska but uh, a comedian yeah uh, yeah yeah a comic Ari 
uh, I, he's not. I mean, he, d- he does more writing and stuff now, but he's from Alaska. Uh, mm-hmm. But anyway, have you ever been Alaska? California. I've never been. It's one of the the places, uh, one of the states. I don't think I've been to Alaska, and I don't believe I've been to Montana and North Dakota. I want to say I've been to North Dakota actually. North Dakota University, I think I went there. So maybe Alaska and Montana, maybe Wyoming. Those are the only three states I haven't been to. You spent your honeymoon there. Yeah, I spent a week there last month. I loved it. I had always wanted to go. I knew very little about it, but I'm excited to talk about it. Could you guys name anyone from Alaska, like a celebrity? Jewel. I knew Jewel was from there. Yeah. I, I don't know if I could have named her, but I, that, I know that now. Mm-hmm. That he said it. I, I first I could only think of Sarah Palin. Sarah Palin, yeah. And then I remember Jewel, uh, but that's the only two I could name. Yeah, from there. Yeah, there's a few, some basketball players, Carlos Boozer, Mario oh. Chalmers, from there. Oh, wow. Kurt Schilling. Wow. The painter Bob Ross. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. According to this, well, it makes sense because <laughs> yeah. I, I said it several times when I was there. Is everywhere looks like a, a Bob Ross painting? Yeah. But that's my that's my only reference for an artist. So maybe there are other artists that work better. But I knew that Alaska was the biggest state. I didn't realize just how much bigger it was. It so you tell a big. joke on stage about it being three times bigger than Texas. Yeah, and it basically is. I saw mm-hmm. a picture of it in the center of the United States, and it it's like a third of the country. Wow, it's yeah. so big. If you laid it over the continental United States, the most western part of it, the most western part of it would. If you put the most western part on Los Angeles, yeah. the most eastern part would be in Florida. I mean, that's 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 how big we're talking. Boy, here. that does not look like that on that map right there. Ah, well, you'd have to maybe tilt it a little bit. Oh, okay. But some random tour guide in Talkeetna, Alaska told me that, so I'm going to defend it till I die. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know? said it as... <laughs> I mean, it's funny to hear the source <laughs> of this. To go, you say it, you're like, wow, dude, that's cool. Where'd you hear that? You're like, just a guy up there. <laughs> just some dude up there told me that, and I'm going to stick to it. Yeah. They, we did, Rhode Island was our first state. That's the smallest. Um, 470 Rhode Islands can fit in Alaska. Well, wow. I believe people were wondering that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Isn't that pretty fascinating? I mean, I, the more fascinating thing is that the western part of touch California and Florida, I don't think, then go, why not Rhode Island? Oh boy, that was my first fact you know, out of the gate. Well, you know who, the only person that wants to know that is maybe Rhode Island. Is Rhode Island. You're like, all right, Rhode Island, well, we've already done you. So maybe not every state has to be about, every state's like, how many Rhode I guess we got to do that now. Every, every state, other state, how many Rhode Islands How many Rhode Islands can, can fit, fit in, in this state? Mm-hmm. Four. 477. All right, here's another fact that I was amazed by. It's the least, all right, this is not the fact, but to set it up, so it's the third least populous state um, of any state, and it's by far the most sparsely populated. Mm-hmm. Uh, if Manhattan had the same population di- density as Alaska, only 16 people would live in Manhattan. Uh, That's pretty wild. Yeah. That'd be like yeah. the apocalypse. Yeah. yeah. And there are there were parts of it, man, where I was out there and I was like, I've never felt so desolate no people it's so big it, um the scale of things was overwhelming where we would be looking at mountains and we'd have a tour guide go all right how far away do you think that mountain is and we'd look at it and be like i don't know, I, I don't know a mile or two and they're like that's 80 miles away wow. it's wow. just so big you just have no concept of how yeah. big all yeah. this stuff is and you just don't we would go hours without seeing people yeah. Oh, it's cheating it with that tail. Come on. Oh, yeah. What? What are you talking about? How's that cheating? <laughs> I mean, well, it's... That's like, uh, I left some... You're, you're like, all right, I guess I didn't know that part was a part of... I it. almost don't believe this That feels like when we, when, we won, uh, when we won Alaska, we're like, in that part there. And they go, all right, fine. In that, and then that part. Okay. And then those uh, four <laughs> parts. Uh, and, all right, dude, how far out do you want to go? All the way. All the way just to that one. And they go, that's fine. And just one more. Thing. All right, we're done. That's it. That's enough. That's how that feels at the end of that, where you go, uh, sure, you can have all that dumb stuff. What is all that stuff? Do people even like- Those are islands out there, Do man. people live on that? I, I bet. I read that one of those islands was the only- uh, World War II was only fought on American soil at uh, one of those islands. 
Yeah, they got they got cities out here, man. They don't have cities. No, they're not t- cities, but they have civil. You know, look, there's a someone lives on Nikosaki. that. Someone lives on that. Yeah, somebody lives on <laughs> Chuganadak Island, dude. Right here. I wonder what the population of Chardonnay. I bet is. there are scientists that live out there, people that take care of the land, stuff like that. Well, you have a magical device in your right in front of your face. Maybe type in. <laughs> Do you not want to type it in because you think it's going to say, of course not. <laughs> this is a remote island that's cold. Mm-hmm. So who would want to? Look, that Unimac Island that we were just looking at, 64 people live there. Right here. Okay. Right. 64 people. There's probably a subway that goes there. <laughs> I would like you to go out a little bit. Yeah, that's one of the bigger the, ones. That's one of the oh, bigger ones. That's going. like basically, that, that island's basically touching Alaska. You could drive to You want me to like check out? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. so Atu Station here. I, I don't know what just happened. Atu, jeez. Oh it doesn't want me. It doesn't want yeah, me to Yeah, it won't let you do it. Know. So like one of these? Yeah. All right. Okay. Just look up one of those. All there. right. <laughs> um... <laughs> So the state capital, do you know? Uh, oh, I do, but I can't think of it. It's a movie with Fargo. <laughs> Fargo North of Star Wars. Marvel, one of the Marvel movies, Iron Man. That's Glorious. A good guess. Juno. Juno. Yeah. It is a movie. Uh-huh. It's spelled I was, differently. I was gonna say. It's the second largest city in the United States by area. Meaning it's bigger than Rhode Island. <laughs> is it? Yeah, How many Rhode Islands? A, probably just one, but it's bigger uh, than Rhode Island and Delaware. Yeah, just in uh, actual size. It's the second large, the largest city. Does is Alaska the, say how many Rhode? Like that? It says how hungry they are. <laughs> how hungry are you? I could eat five Rhode Islands right now. And you go, whoa! That's a big, got a big boy here. Yeah. There's no road access to Juneau. It's the only capital city. You have to get there by boat or plane. Oh. Wow. Did you go? No, we didn't go to Juneau. We we got into Anchorage and then worked our way up to Fairbanks. So we only really tackled like one corner of it. Juneau's kind of its own its own thing, like you said. Mm. You know? I mean, is there like there's there, there's parts of it that are just nothing. No one's at. I think yeah. majority of it. I the mean, vast majority. Like, most of it, man. Yeah. Um, we took. It's called the Alaskan. I think it's called the Alaskan Railroad. Yeah. We took it from Anchorage to Fairbanks, and we didn't even get out of this bottom right corner of the state. But there were hours where the the train conductor would go, "All right, we're about to enter a dead zone. There's nothing out here." Oh, really? There's nothing, and you just just go and look. Nothing. I mean, as far as the eye can see, it's it's so it's hard to comprehend how big it is, and there's just nothing out there, man. And like. You mean like there's no mountains? There's no it's oh, like there's, flat. It, no, the scenery, just, just trees, just trees. No oh. man-made objects besides the train. Uh, oh yeah. God, no, no, yeah. no. Yeah, that's where Bigfoot lives. He could like for if sure. there's a Bigfoot. That's the thing that they would say. Like there's parts of uh, there is so much room for a yeah. Bigfoot to be, and you would have no idea. It's crazy to think how big a train is, and then you, uh, you know, think about if. How big a train is, and then just to be going, and there's so much, no one's around. Mm-hmm. God, it's like so big. Yeah, it is. No, that was actually the coolest part of that. Uh, taking the railroad, yeah, is it's the last whistle stop train in the country. That's what they told me. I didn't fact check that at all, <laughs> but they said it's the last whistle stop train, meaning that locals have a right to literally whistle and get the train will stop and pick them up this is like an old old fashioned looking rail like yeah. train so we're sitting there it looks like there's nothing and then every once in a while this like mountain man would come out of the woods and stop the train and hop on and you could like peek through the woods and see their homestead out there we're talking middle of nowhere and there are people out there that just, for whatever reason, just want to get away from everything. They just go yeah. out and live in the middle of nowhere. And they can flag that train down and hop up to Fairbanks for whatever reason. They have to whistle to get it to stop? I don't I don't know if they actually whistle or if that's just, if they flag it down somehow. But that's what they call it, a whistle stop train. So every 45 I mean, minutes or yeah. so, the train would stop. Probably pretty hard to hear a whistle. 
<laughs> over, over, over a tray. You'd have to whistle loud. Yeah. <laughs> they give you like, uh-huh. one of those, like, <laughs> and then this <laughs> trains here. Uh-huh. <laughs> Man, can you imagine like living? There's something I guess if you know how to hunt, you can live all that. You just live off the wild. Yeah, there was a story in the New York Times just a couple of days ago about a guy who was being stalked by a grizzly bear. There, do you see this? Mm-mm. He got mauled by this bear. He was out there alone, no cell service, and he got away and got back to his camp, I guess, or a shed that he was in. And then for days, the bear would come back and try to get to him like tear the tin off and stuff like that. Oh, man. And it just kept stalking him. And then he finally, a helicopter or airplane flew over and he like waved them down and they landed and saved his life. But he'd been out there for days because this bear wouldn't let him leave. He whistle stopped the airplane. <laughs> yeah. So you can stop any kind of mode of transportation in Alaska. <laughs> Boat, airplane, <laughs> just wave it all down. Whistles. And everybody just goes, we got to, we, it's part of the laws. You got to pick them up. Uh-huh. You got to pick them up. One of the pilots said, did he wave with one hand or two? And they said two. And they was like, oh, okay, that's the symbol for stop. I'm in trouble. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Which, are, I mean, it's kind of, seems like common sense, but I never thought about it. If he was yeah. doing this, yeah. he's just waving. But if he's doing this. Yeah, wow. did he, he come back? Did he see? Yeah, he see wave back. <laughs> So they're, are they coming back? Oh, I don't know. Did you wave with two hands? No, no, no I was. How you doing? Yeah. Just, and he nodded. We both did that. And then. Saluted. He's gone forever. Yeah. Well, they tell you. Hey, That's that. not like the movie. What's the movie with Leonardo DiCaprio? Everyone said it was like The Revenant, but it's, uh, but that was the one where the bear just left him for dead. There was a movie with Anthony Hopkins and Alec Baldwin, The Edge. You guys remember this movie? Uh, no. I think so. It was Alec in- Baldwin played the bear. Go ahead. <laughs> What'd you say? Alec Baldwin played the bear. Go ahead. I don't know. <laughs> they got they crashed or something in Alaska. And this Something's bear- for closers. <laughs> <laughs> the bear kept stalking them. There's, there you go. Kept stalking them for days, and they finally had to come up with a way to kill it. Uh, in my old uh, movie watching days, as are right now, when I watch old movies, maybe yeah. I'll go watch The Edge. Yeah, it's good. It's got Elliot yeah. Pearson. You know, they say don't judge a book by its cover. I feel like I can <laughs> judge a movie by its poster. Is this movie terrible? I liked it. Oh. It's a bear stalking them. I mean, yeah. it looks awful, dude. <laughs> Just based on that poster alone. Well, did oh. you see any bear when you were there? Saw a few. Out in the wild. Yeah. Yeah. We took, uh, we went into the Denali National Forest, yeah. which is a third of the size of Tennessee. That's how big it is. So big, and there's only one road going into it. So we took a tour bus on this one paved road, right into the middle of it, and then we took a we took a little bush plane out of it, Lucy and I. But they were like, "Look, you're lucky if you see kind of one grizzly bear in the distance. So just don't get your expectations up. You're lucky if you see if you see one. And we saw one that was about a couple hundred yards away, just kind of sitting there looking at mm. us. And we were like, there's our there's our bear sighting. That's fine. Then we turn around the corner and there's a mom and a cub on the road right in front of us. So the the bus driver pulls up kind of as close as she can right behind it. And we're all watching it. We're like, this is crazy. It's like right there, right? And then the, the tour guide goes, nobody look, but there's another bear coming up right behind us. And there's a, a another adult bear comes up from the back of the bus and confronts the mother and her cub. That's the interaction. It's like the mother cub is defending yeah. the mother's defending her cub to this stranger. Yeah. And she scares that one away and it runs away. And this all happened like I could reach out and touch them from the bus. It was pretty wild. You were so close you could just reach out. I could open the window of this bus and reach out and touch the bears. No problem. Is uh so it's, it, but I'm actually the, the order of the road is it goes bear, bus, bear. We pull around a corner. Yeah. The two bears are in front of us. Okay. And then the other bear comes from behind us. Yeah. And kind of comes around the side of the bus up, yeah. up to him. And the, they're, they're not even sort of acknowledging this bus. They didn't acknowledge us at all. And the brakes kind of squealed a little yeah. bit. I thought they were going to be like, what are y'all doing here? Yeah. But they didn't at all. Yeah. It, it's a weird feeling. Like, we're in their home. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not like a zoo or a conservatory. It's like, this is where they live. And we just pull up in this school bus. And then they just... And they just... And they're fine with it. Yeah. They seem was totally fine with it. Was the bus packed? It. It, was, it was pretty full. There were yeah. like 25, 30 people on it. You know? Yeah. Did you have pictures of it? 
Uh, I, you know what? I wasn't taking many pictures. Lucy was taking some oh, pictures. Okay. I felt dumb. Everybody's up. I don't know. I probably should have taken more. I got yeah. a couple of videos of seeing the. Yeah. And did the mama bear threaten the other bear? Just like scared her off? Kind of stood up and got in its face. Yeah. And just kind of let it know, hey, you need to turn back around. Yeah. And they kind of just looked at each other and got up. And then Was the they, other one on its back legs too? They weren't standing. They weren't like oh. bumping chest, oh, okay. but they kind of got up, got up at each other. Okay. Yeah. And the other one turned around and ran. Yeah. Wow. Kind of cool to see. Yeah. Yeah. That's know? crazy. Mm -hmm. oh. All right. They're just out there. It's it's crazy, man. Yeah. So I read where when the U.S. purchased Alaska in, from Russia in like 1950 something or maybe earlier than that. Um, Put it on a credit card. <laughs> yeah. I well, think they it was were, that cheap. I mean, how much was it? You have the uh, price on there. It was seven point two million, which amounts to two cents per acre. What if you could? So someone would have just bought it. Like, could anybody have bought it? Could they? Could someone just go? I'll buy it, and a guy buys it. What year was that? It was eighteen ninety eight. Okay, so people had that kind of money back then. A few people did. In eighteen ninety eight. Oh, it was, it was actually yeah. a little bit before that, but they thought it was a huge mistake. They called it Seward's Folly because the guy who, Secretary of State, that came up with it, it's like, why do we want all this land? And then <laughs> gold was discovered in 1898, and it became a huge deal. And now there's a Seward's Day to commemorate the purchase of the last Okay. And then, I mean, isn't there like oil and like all that kind of stuff? And like, it's like we could live off Alaska. Like, it's like a. I feel like they bought it to try to flip it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> fix it up and sell it to some other Canada yeah. or something. Yeah. Canada? Why, why didn't Canada get it? I don't know. Well, they they didn't lazy. have the money then. Just lazy. Just lazy, yeah. dude. <laughs> they just didn't want they it. They didn't. Hey, they're about, uh, you, United States is about to buy Alaska. They're like, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> they just had a king that was like i don't care right <laughs> now and he can't i mine for gold in the in a river yeah i go? didn't catch anything dude i mean obviously i would have told you by now if i had come back <laughs> yeah. with gold but it'd be gold chain on i was doing it and i was like this is just a waste of time you know it's like just to, does anybody ever get anything they're like yeah we heard of that it was like some girl working at this place she was like yeah i heard somebody got some last summer like, so you literally right. go out with a pan and you go out and they, you go out and you do it the way that they would do it back in the day, right? Yeah. With like a pan that you, you you scoop up stuff and you sift it through. It felt like a colossal waste of time. That would almost be so. Like if someone goes and takes a vacation to Alaska, you would say avoid the gold thing. <laughs> or is that gold thing sandwiched in with something else? Oh, we had like time to kill before that plane yeah. ride. We're in the middle of Denali yeah. National Park. There's nothing else to do. We'll, yeah. we'll try to mine for some gold. Yeah. And nobody caught anything, obviously. Yeah. Just got our shoes all wet. Yeah. Uh, you have to walk around with wet shoes the rest of the day? Yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. man. That's yeah. not fun. Yeah. How cold is it? It got pretty cold. You know, obviously, the higher up you go, the colder it is. So by the time we got to, like, the middle of that, it was pretty cold out there. Yeah. It was 30s, 40s. Yeah. Did you see the Aurora Borealis? No, we couldn't. I didn't see darkness at all there Oh, the whole time we were there. Like what was the hours of sunset and sunset? It was sunset was like one thirty, and then sunrise was three thirty. So it was just only a couple hours where, and it only got partially dark even then. So we just and, and it was just asleep. broad daylight. It is bizarre to walk out yeah. at midnight and it feels like three in the afternoon. Yeah. It's bizarre. You feel like you should do something. I you do feel like yeah. that. Yeah, I feel like such a lazy. You know, I think there was a movie and I think it was called Insomnia with Robin Williams. Oh, yeah. And Al Pacino. In Alaska. Yeah. 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 Alec Baldwin's the bear. <laughs> Little known fact. Little known fact. Stick around to the end. Yeah. <laughs> it's 50 miles from Russia. Uh, you can see it from my house. Yep. Yeah. And the Bering Land Strait, they, anthropologists think the first humans that came to North America came from Russia. Mm-hmm. And at one time, it was all connected. The yeah. Ice Age, right? One of those ages. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure. Could've Some been. age. Could have been. been. Could've Some been. age that came over. Did you see Eskimo? Is that even a real thing? <laughs> you like, yeah, like native yeah. native Alaskan people. I think they're called. Yeah, Induits. You know, indigenous. Inuits. In Inuits. Indigenous people, yeah. Yep. Yeah, they're, they're everywhere. They're all, they're all over. I just heard someone talk about that saying, like, you're not supposed to say Eskimo, but it's not... It's because there's different. I think there's. Like, that would just be like one. That's like one. 
Mm -hmm. uh, that's like one group of people. Like, so it's not, I don't think it's even that that's offensive. It's, but the people that are like, we're not Eskimos. So you're right. just calling all of us Eskimos. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, I think some Asian guy told me that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, Barrow, Alaska has the longest and shortest amount of daylight. When the sun rises on May 10th, it doesn't set for nearly three months. And when it sets on November 18th, they don't see a sun again for two months. Wow. Some guy, some local, he told me, I, you, I would never have thought about this. He goes, you know the worst part about all that? I go, what? He goes, I got to mow my grass so often because mm -hmm. oh, the sun's uh, just always out. I, I never would have yeah. thought about that. You have to yeah. mow the grass like every other day. Yeah. Hmm. Twice as much sunlight. Every other day. Well, maybe not that yeah. often. But, but yeah, maybe twice a week or something or <laughs> I, once a week. I think our grass gets mowed once a week. Okay, so twice, a, twice week. a week. Twice here, a week. Yeah. I mean, I feel like here it's be so hot and humid, the grass would wither if there was never – the sun never went down. Mm, that's a good point. Maybe this guy was just totally making stuff up to me. Yeah. The people up there, it's it's funny. It's a good mix of uh, – most people I met were – they they came to Alaska. They like, came up here for a summer, and then I just stuck around. Like, I just couldn't leave. Like, the sheer beauty of this place, I just had to stay. A few people grew up there, but most people are like that. We were in this town, Talkeetna, that had no government. Oh, wow. None no whatsoever. government. Yeah. None whatsoever. And I'm talking to this dude. He's got a Korean War veteran hat on, mustache. He just looks like prototypical Alaskan dude. And he goes, y'all might have noticed that we don't have government here. And that's just the way we like it. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone's like, oh, man. Somebody goes, what if somebody commits a crime yeah. or something? He goes, we take care of it. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> Dude, they're just a different breed up there, man. They just live life differently in some parts. And you understand the appeal of it. Yeah. You know? So the roads and everything's paid by, by the state or I don't something? Know. I don't know how the roads are paved. But they're like, we don't we don't have a mayor. There's one town the mayor was a cat because they <laughs> – because it's just a cat that hung out at a general store that they all – is stubs or something. They're like, that's the mayor. We don't want a real government. We don't want a police force. We don't want a fire firemen. We don't want anything. We'll do it all ourselves. Yeah. And he's like, some people come up and try to start stuff. Next thing you know, their car's on fire. They leave. They just get rid of them. Jeez. They handle stuff themselves, man. It's kind of cool. So murder's legal there. But <laughs> long story short. It is, is kind of cool. Uh, just... <laughs> Essentially, yeah, you can get away with it. Yeah. It would be so easy to get away with murder up there. I was mm -hmm. thinking about it the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> Not the whole time. Lucy? I mean, yeah, just on my honeymoon, mind. just thinking <laughs> yeah. about how I could get away with murder. What do you think about it, Aaron? Nothing. A couple of things. <laughs> you don't want to know. <laughs> just, I know there's at least one comedy. Is the airplane door open? <laughs> you just asked him. What's that? Oh, just wondering. You got those headphones that you're talking in there? Is uh Lucy, could you turn your down? <laughs> Does the airplane door, can you just slide it? Would you hear anything if I <laughs> shoved something out of this? That's how you would do it, take them up. But I have other people in the plane with me. I have to push them now out, you too. you got to kill everybody. I know, and then I have to land the plane. <laughs> Once you do it, then you're like, oh, no. Everybody looks at you. They go, why'd you do that? You go, oh, you start just throwing everybody out the plane. <laughs> and then you're like, all right. We're good? And then the pilot's like, hey, what's going on back there? <laughs> oh, no. Ah, you got to throw them out. Now the plane's empty. We're good. And then you got to, and then it starts going. <laughs> and then you throw the plane out. <laughs> you get rid of the plane. Yeah. The plane tosses, then tosses you out. Maybe it's the plane. I'm there. sitting, I sat on that bush plane, very small plane. I'm very uncomfortable. And I'm sitting shotgun. You know, they have to distribute the weight on this plane. Yeah. So I'm sitting shotgun. Do they ask you for your weight? The, yeah, they, they, they're very precise about You have to put on you, all your gear and they weigh you. Did the, did the guy go, <sighs> uh, all right, everybody. <laughs> like, do you remember that at all? Do you remember any, like, big kind everybody of Well, actually. <laughs> when you showed up, did he go, <sighs> <laughs> you saw him just start, like. <laughs> Stop, like. <laughs> He just I look he starts at taking yeah. stuff out of the plane. Yeah. 
<laughs> we'll get you the next round. Yeah. 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 I was worried about that, but I had actually lost a bunch of weight from when I submitted my weight months oh. before that. So, that so was I was cool. able to show up and they were under budget. That was the so talk we of like, the plane. <laughs> they are like, oh, Whoa, man. Whoa, look at this. Got a little root. I was still the biggest on the plane. Yeah. But, uh, was that your motivation? Just that plane ride the whole time? No, yeah. but, I, but I'm glad it worked out when we were there. I was like, I'm glad I did that. Yeah, well, you get it right up front. I'm still smushed in the front. And, you know, it's the front of a small plane. There's buttons everywhere. And I don't know. And my knees are, like, pushing up against these buttons. And I told him, I was like, I asked the pilot, I go, can I, what do I, he goes, yeah, don't touch any of that. And my knee is right next to this eject. <laughs> this thing that yeah. just says, like, pr- it says propeller or not. Or, uh, it's even worse than eject. It yeah. said uh, <laughs> something. <laughs> Something that did not look like, like I yeah. wanted to hit it. Very important. And so I almost, I mean, I I, I almost didn't enjoy any of it because I'm just so worried about accidentally hitting yeah. one of these buttons with my knees Yeah, the whole time. So I'm just, at the whole plane, I'm literally like this because I don't want to touch any of this stuff. Seems I think odd. it's a propeller plane. Propeller, uh, what a wing, propeller wing or something. Yeah. I was like, I don't want to hit that. Yeah, it seems odd it would and, be back there. With would you, yeah. is, is he like giving you a tour up there? No, he no. It's just to get to the next place. Oh, he 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 is given. It's a yeah. scenic thing. Okay, he's swooping yeah. around. Yeah, yeah. He's jumping between mountains and yeah. stuff. So he's doing it up. I mean, is it like a ride? Like yeah. you're like whoa. Parts of it are yeah. for sure. Yeah, and you can you can see like a storm coming, and I was like freaking out. He didn't, didn't even phase him. He just like drives right through it, and then he'll come down. And we'll, I'm like, we're getting too low. I thought you were about to clip the side of these mountains yeah, at yeah. some point. Pretty wild. Yeah. But you go, I mean, it's so desolate. That also helped me appreciate the scale, is we're flying over places that you can't get to. There's no road out there. And you look down, and there's just nothing, dude. Yeah. As far as the eye can see. Yeah. It's overwhelming. Would you ever want to live there? Um, I'd like to visit there regularly, but I don't know if I want to live there. Everything's super expensive there. Mm. And it's so hard to get anywhere, you know. Like it would be, you would have to be comfortable just like, I'm staying here. Uh huh. Like the idea of it for like, if you were like, oh, let me go do two weeks in this house, but everything's stocked, everything's ready to go. Yeah. And then you're like, no one come and you're just alone for two weeks or something yeah like it'd be something fun like that uh-huh but maybe then you would turn like the stanford prison experience <laughs> yeah. and you start start just running through the woods uh-huh. <laughs> you know you know you fight a bear well actually i made a mistake Baldwin. i've read the story yeah. about <laughs> about this guy who i just had a root canal done by the way but and i've needed to have it done for like a year and so i had a toothache when we were on our way to alaska and I read a story about a guy who went hunting in rural Alaska and got a sudden toothache, and it was so bad, and he was so far away from everybody, he just killed himself because it hurt so bad. Ugh. Yeah. So the, I thought about that the whole trip too. Yeah, I was like, yeah. if we're if it, on this plane, if it crashes or something, and I get a bad toothache, I'm gonna have to kill myself. So yeah, it's a fun trip. Yeah, that'd be the edge part two, <laughs> the sequel. This yeah. guy yeah. just kills himself. So 17 of What the- kind of magazine were you reading yeah. before you went out there? <laughs> it, was a mag- it was on my phone. Yeah. A magazine. you just looking up. You still read magazines? I don't know. I'm just you're reading <laughs> suicide deaths in Alaska before you had to take a trip out there. I just, what kind of websites you, you're popping on? Well, I Googled. I was worried I had an abscess tooth. So I yeah. Googled abscess tooth and then in I found Alaska? that story. No, it just happened to be about Alaska. Yeah. Was it, I'm like, I'm on my way there. Wasn't Jim Gaffigan in, in Alaska when his appendix rupture or something? I don't, I don't know. know. I'll look that up. I feel like just like a couple of years ago, he had to be helicoptered out because his appendix ruptured and he was in the middle of nowhere, Alaska. Yeah, that's another thing to, to think about being that far away. You know, it, like a town with no... I understand how it's romantic to be in a city with no government, but... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'd like a hospital nearby. Yeah. You know, He's yeah, in oh, Alaska. Yeah. In a, a, Anchorage. Anchorage is a real city. Yeah. So, so he, uh, that's a breeze. Jim. But I think, I think he was. <laughs> Come on. If, if I could pick a place to lose my appendix, it'd be in, uh, it'd be in Anchorage, Alaska. Yeah. But didn't it? I think he was out in the middle of nowhere and they had a helicopter him out. Yeah. That's crazy. Uh, 
I know they have at least one comedy club there because Billy Wayne Davis did it this weekend. He was promoting. Uh, they do. Yeah, there's some comedy going on in Anchorage mm-hmm. for sure. Yeah, Anchorage is like a real city. Like you just yeah. you like there's buildings down. They have like big buildings. Or? If you're in it, you're like this could be anywhere. Oh yeah, this could, you could pick this up and put this in yeah. Nebraska. Yeah, you know? yeah. Half of Alaska. So is that where you stayed a lot for the first couple days? Like at a regular hotel. You just at like a Hilton. Yeah. Downtown. And then we took the railroad, and then that's when you stop in these smaller cities. Yeah, on the way out, people are whistling stop. <laughs> Foot whistle stops. <laughs> yeah. Did you just go to hops on? <laughs> <laughs> I want to go down and, and talk excuse to him. me. He sits down next to you. <laughs> <laughs> what is he? I mean, it's like yeah. They looked like what you think. I mean, yeah. dirty face, huge yeah. beard. That's not what I was thinking. Yeah. What were you thinking? Suit and tie. Yeah, that's what I. Yeah. <laughs> I just picture like reverend. Like the revenant, lady, yeah, the revenant, yeah. Well, that that was kind of what it was like, yeah. Yeah, like he just pops on, and he's like, <laughs> you know, and then he just sits there, and you're like, <laughs> just growling <laughs> you're in your so. Notre Dame hat. <laughs> you're just staring at him. Your NASCAR and, jacket, yeah. yeah. Your big flashy NASCAR, like, and he's like, "What are you? You're like a billionaire type." Like he just thinks uh-huh. you're a yeah. sign of money. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Seventeen of the tallest of twenty tallest. Mountain peaks in the U.S. are in Alaska. Hmm. Denali is the tallest mountain yeah. in the U.S., which I was like, I don't even heard of this, because five years ago it changed its name from Mount McKinley. Mount McKinley, yeah. Oh, and now they're Denali? hmm Why did they change the name? Denali was what the indigenous Alaskans called it. Yeah. And then I think McKinley was running for, I think he was running for president. I think he was president. I, at some point, he's like, just name it after me, and they're like, all right. And nobody really wanted to there. That's what they say there. Oh. Got a little let's go, folks. Hello, folks. Saying yeah. Oh, yeah. little yeah. McKinley. Well, that's funny. McKinley's like, nah, they want it. <laughs> goes, they want to call it that. Yeah. And he could be like, okay, I guess we'll call it McKinley. Uh, Mount McKinley. When did they change it back? Five years ago. I oh, think. really? I think it was or five or six. I mean, mm. I was like, I've never heard of Denali. And then I looked it up, and they're like, well, 2015, 2016, something like that. I'll tell you how recently it's it's some of the museums we went to, whenever they had McKinley written, you could see they had like put a piece of tape over it and then they wrote Denali (laughs) over it. So it must have been pretty recently. Well, McKinley got it on there for a bit. Yeah. Yeah. And then finally. Like over 100 years, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We didn't see it the whole time we were there. It was cloudy. Oh, really? They say if it's a clear day, you can see it. Yeah. And I was like, is it obvious? They're like, yeah, dude, it's obvious. If you see uh, it, you know that's the one. But we never did. But you were in Denali, the park? The park. And that's where Denali, the mountain, okay. the Denali's yeah. in there. Yeah. Yeah, that's how you see any of those mountains. Like, what's uh, Mount Hood? Or where, Mount Rainier? Mount Rainier. We went, yeah, it's mm-hmm. like, it's just there. Yeah. It's like, if, it'd be, it's like if you see, like, a class photo and, like, they have an NBA player, like, in his elementary school. <laughs> it's just like... <laughs> Taller than the teacher, yeah. And yeah. you're like, oh, that's the one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, obviously, okay. yeah. That's obviously who we're right. gonna talk to. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Did you go to Nome? No, that's where the Iditarod is ran from Anchorage to Nome. I was just wondering how long that was. We went to it. Uh, I did a rod. This guy Dallas Seavey, who's won the I did a rod like I think three or four times. Mm. He had a bit of a dynasty going there. Mm-hmm. We went to his like compound and did sled racing dog sled racing oh you did with his dogs yeah me and lucy you mm-hmm. like mush we didn't we didn't mush them but we're on uh we got i had we had four of them hooked up to us you're on the dogs yeah we're in no we're <laughs> like, sit, grab the ears on the dogs i will say for me they broke <laughs> See the dog same way the plane he's like <laughs> two, three. okay all right i'll take him i'll take him well they they broke out the i did a rod champions for me yeah the dogs that they're like this one won the i did a rod last year i was like yeah i need you need the cream of the The real deal and how fast would you go did you uh was brian there asking for his autograph (laughs) (laughs) i would have been trying to get his paw print on uh he puts his paw in mud and (laughs) gets it on a piece of paper that's the dog that won the i would is that him that's Dallas Seavey, who's won the uh, I did a rod a few times, and yeah. that's one of the dogs. This is what the, it looks like. See these little things, these little yeah. like chariots back there. Yeah. You got basically hand brakes, and you, they say when they're when the dogs are running, you got to keep those hand brakes at least halfway done 
because if you totally let go of the brakes, they just let loose. Yeah. They want to sprint. Those dogs, that's all they want to do is sprint. And I let them go a couple times. Yeah. And, and we go. really got rolling. I was yeah. like, oh, man. And you're on uh, no snow. Which you... No, yeah, it's dry. There's not snow up there at this point. Yeah. But every time I'd brake, I was kind of, you know, I was bad at it at first. Yeah. I'd never controlled dogs before. I hit the brakes a little awkwardly. Yeah. Like all four dogs in unison, like turn around and look at me and they're like, what are you doing, dude? Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, my like, bad. Sorry. sorry. Yeah. Yeah. I'm learning it, you know? And then you let them go. Yeah. That's fun. Pretty what cool. kind of dogs are they? Uh, I don't know. Some of them are just like mutts, oh. they said. And they're nice and friendly. And they're so friendly, yeah. dude. They, they none of them bite. You walk right up, they jump on you. They just want to. Yeah, there's hundreds. They of would them out so there. they would sign an autograph for them. <laughs> they <would>. They'd appreciate <laughs> sure. it. I'd love that. Yeah, Carlos Groves never won a. The uh, never won an uh, I did a rod. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Mm-hmm. All right, I'm about done here. Yeah. Uh, Northern Exposure was a TV show set in Sicily, Alaska. I never watched it, but I certainly remember it. Sicily, Alaska. Huh. Never heard of it. Never heard of it. Fictional. The town's fictional. But you've heard oh, yeah. of Northern Exposure. Oh, Sicily, Alaska's not a real town? Yeah. Oh. I think they just made up the town, but the show was Why set. would they not just pick a real town <laughs> when they were writing a show? Why would you say Sicily, Alaska, and then that sounds like Italy, right? Like, isn't it? Yeah, I think you're the island. Yeah. Of- and then you're like, oh, so like that. Then I thought, oh, they have a town called Sicily? Maybe I'm pronouncing it wrong. C-I-C-E-L-Y? So I would sounds right to me. Validity. <laughs> uh, the proposal starring Sandra Bullock and Ron Reynolds was set in Sitka, Alaska. I think I watched that. Did you really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's got Betty it's White. Fun. Betty White's on it. Yeah, it's a fun. It's it's a uh, it's fun. It's got a lot of. What's the uh, roar like? They when is that? Is the that... Roar Borealis. Yeah, it's uh, Northern Lights. The Northern Lights. That's right. Can be seen on 243 days a year in Fairbanks. I think you can see it. That's what I would want. To, I'd want to go see that. Yeah, me too. That's got to be wild. I bet. I, I, I would love to go to Alaska. I, I think it'd be awesome. I never just. I knew some comics that were doing shows there, and I never uh, went up there and did a show. But I would love to go. It is awesome, man. I feel like I've uh, haven't done it justice talking about it, but today, but it, but it was like it was. It's overwhelmingly beautiful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That I just stopped taking pictures because you're like every I could take pictures all day. Yeah, because everywhere is the prettiest thing I've ever seen. Well, it's, it, you get to enjoy it. I yeah. mean, it's a good that's a good thing to to not take uh, to go appreciate it to go to go be overwhelmed with it. Yeah, is uh yeah you know I think people would experience it in their phones, and that's a good thing to mm-hmm. uh, realize that I tried to we I mean I was in uh, Destin, Florida, <laughs> same kind of thing, and. Uh, <laughs> I left my, I would leave my phone in the room yeah. and I didn't have to watch, but I was doing it to be like, well, I'm going to go, I, we weren't going to see anything. But yeah. It was like, I'm going to go lay at the pool. I'm going to do whatever, but I'm going to make myself just have to be there. Right. There's yeah. a real reason to do it in Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> That's before, yeah. I go, you know, I'm going to go look at these beaches yeah. and I'm going to appreciate them. Uh-huh. There's mountains. See the ocean. Yeah. How big the ocean is. It's, it's big. pretty big. How many uh, Rhode Islands is in the Pacific? <laughs> yeah, millions. Million. I started watching uh, this uh, thing on HBO, 100 Foot Wave. It's oh, I saw the trailer for yeah. it. What's that? It's about uh, I mean, them trying to find a 100 foot wave to surf. Oh. Where are they searching? Talking about 100 foot is, the, <sighs> is a wave that goes around a stadium. 100, we're 100 feet of people <laughs> just going, whoa. <laughs> We uh, did the wave in the sounds game recently, and it, I mean, you don't see many waves anymore. It's, are you for the wave? I love it. Yeah. You love, I, I knew you would love the wave. Yeah. You I just did. go, you go there for the wave. Well, what it feels I'd like. I'd forgotten about it. But I was like, this brings back memories. You love the camaraderie. Yeah. With all that He's uh, taps the, the person start. in front of him. Hey, when do you think the wave's going to happen? <laughs> Let's get it started, go, buddy. Uh, probably about fifth inning. I don't know. We're adults, man. <laughs> yeah. So maybe <laughs> you do it. There's so many kids there, though. That's why you do it. And I, I yeah, like yeah, it. Yeah. I get it as That's a kid. That's why I like it. It's uh, for the kids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I i like the wave but it's like i would be like if it's all if no kid was at the stadium and someone tried to do the wave you'd be like yo dude just let's sit and watch the game right and then but if you have a kid you're like yeah dude it's the, yeah. you want the kids like you're seeing like a kid they love it That's they love all to get the, it started and yeah yeah they cool. uh we had a wave at the dodge game 
Uh, I was in the section near the section that started it. I was not one of the ones that started, but I was on he board was quick. Getting everybody. Yeah. And it's just a bunch of young drunk guys that yeah. started. It's yeah. Usually that. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's like college kids. Yeah. And then everybody's like, all right. Yeah, I guess we'll do it. I guess we'll do it. Yeah. Watching it die out is pretty great. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Man. Just to see it, just kind of you see, you just seeing people they're watching it. Mm-hmm. You're just kind of hoping other people kind of start. They're like, I hope they calm it down over there. All right, that that section's done. <laughs> yeah. Like, but then the other section's still doing you. Like, okay, we've weeded that section out. Outfield's like down. Those yeah. people are uh-huh. three sheets to the wind. Right, they're gone. They're they're drunk. That, that's what out, outfield's. I, like. I mean, especially for minor league baseball because. You got to time it. There's not even fans all the way around. Yeah, <laughs> you got to watch it in yeah. and then time it. One Mississippi, one, two Mississippi. Yeah. All then right, hit now. it again. Yeah, yeah. Pretend it's coming across the grass. Yeah, and yeah. Then when it gets back. Yeah. yeah. There's always a big play that you often ends it too. Like, yeah, somebody hits a home run or something. Everybody's gonna be standing. Yeah, and then it's over, and then you start it again. What about the wave? All right. Uh, anyway, hundred foot. Yeah, I don't know why I mentioned that. I just thought, talking about big Alaskas, the, the ocean. We're talking about big, big ocean, stuff, but talking about big, big stuff. Foot. There's a new big foot video. Uh, I've not seen the video. Is it worth pulling up? I mean, it's like four seconds, but it's yeah. a big foot going through a lake in Michigan. Oh, and it's either carrying. I a, knew a guy. Uh, or I read. I didn't know the guy, but I read there's a guy in Mississippi that saw big foot. Uh, and so yep, yeah, like a I Mississippi saw that story, story too. Like, and he said he saw it. Oh, oh my god. Well, I don't have ads. Oh, this is just No, the, this isn't. Oh, there. I mean, that there looks That looks like a person. It starts walking uh, here eventually. I mean, I don't I don't know if it walks on this one, but Yeah. <laughs> it shows a hulking brown figure which appears to be that carrying video, something. That video that video looked wading across the Cass River. Wow. That when that video right there looks like crazy. Investigate a lot. <laughs> Crazy in a good way. If you were, if you didn't think this was legit, let me just tell you. Investigator Kyle Shaw of the Rocky Mountain Sasquatch Organization <laughs> inspected the footage personally. <laughs> what do you think that is? If you don't think that's Bigfoot, that so I'm not saying. That, it, that I'm not like saying. Man. I'm not saying it's not. Okay. Yeah. That, that's the, not the a fr- bear. Like that doesn't look like a bear. It's not a bear. It looks. It looks. It looks like a man right there. Yeah. And like, uh, you know, they always talk about like the great, uh, the footage of it. And you're like, yeah, but it's a far away way. I mean, that's a crazy, that looks like a, like when the picture, when it's zoomed away, it looks like Bigfoot. But when it zooms in close, it looks like a guy. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, But man, that's a, yeah. What does that do? Where is that guy going? He looks a little (laughs) overweight. It's like, it's a chubbier one. That's why you get caught. Yeah. It's probably the guy's buddy who said, put on the suit and go over there and I'll, film it yeah i mean maybe you think that? i mean maybe uh you think that's what it is brian it's, yeah it's crazy dude i mean you think it's a guy in a suit i, I would say it's probably a better chance of that than bigfoot don't you want to don't, be- don't you want to yeah. believe i do want to believe yeah there's aliens it doesn't there's seem no like bigfoot. it <laughs> you believe in aliens there's no bigfoot that's where you draw the line I mean, I want there to be a Bigfoot, but I do believe more likely there's aliens than Bigfoot. Yeah. I mean, they, they could be Bigfoot. They could. All right. Uh, Alaska. <laughs> Make sure you go. It's a good place to go. I recommend it, man. Yeah. It was awesome. Yeah, it was a fun time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Next week, we will do Fairbanks. That's just, <laughs> we're going to do city by city. Did we ever find anything on that island? Anybody live on it? Yeah, 43 people lived on that. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. Scientists? Probably. That's yeah. probably who it was. Yeah. 43 people. The Atu station here. 43 people live on this island. And they're American wow. citizens. In theory. I mean, listen, I don't, could vote. I don't, they're doing I don't know I their mean, paperwork. Do you think, uh, yeah, COVID, I mean, doesn't even, <laughs> like, you know. They might not even know about COVID. They might not even know about it. That guy that got on that train probably doesn't you know like could you put a mask on oh sir so they're like what? sir do you mind if you could throw a mask on he's like burr, burr. He, I, I know but it's a global pandemic and these are trying these are what's the unprecedented times right. and he's like burr, burr. his oldest oldest boy got mauled by a bear and I had to watch it with my own eyes because I couldn't fight it because another bear was holding me back and I was trying to get in there. 
And there he goes. <laughs> and he's like, well, he goes, let me fight him. And the bear made me watch. <laughs> and you want me to wear a mask? <laughs> <laughs> At two station. All right, everybody. See you next week. Bye.